Minnesota hasn't won a bowl game since 1985. Glenn Mason's going to try to change that in just a few minutes, and the Gopher coach is standing by with Holly Rue. Coach Mason, you've taken the approach for this bowl game to jumpstart yourself for next season. Ten players changed positions, elevated a new defensive coordinator. How much will this game help you for next year? Well, I think it'll help us a lot. Uh, you know, I, I, there's two ways to look at it. Uh, you finish off uh, your season, postseason competition uh, with one season, and, or you look at it to get a jump start on next season, being that we've got so few seniors, Holly. Uh, we have chose to take uh, that approach that's not to slight our older players, but uh, we thought uh, that we were going to make some moves in spring practice uh, anyway, so I made some coaching changes. I made some uh, positional changes, and I think they're positive. That said, Arkansas, a formidable opponent right now. Their rushing game such a big part of their offense, and rushing's been a sore spot for you. What do you look to do today? Well, we're going to try to play 13 guys on defense, I think. Uh, no, you're right. I mean, we've, uh, you know, we uh, uh, phil philosophically, we try to stop the run on defense first and foremost. Easier said than done. And we had our woes coming down the end of last year, I think, uh, part of it because we're so young on defense. And uh, we're just going to do the best we can. We're going to play our defense, and hopefully our guys will be fired up and make some plays. On offense, Assad abdul Khalik has the potential to be a playmaker and has done that at times this season for you. What do you look from him today? Well, I look for Assad to play awfully well today. He was banged up most of the year. Uh, our bowl preparation is the first time in about two and a half months that I've seen him running around the practice field without both ankles heavily taped. He's healthy. He's ready to go. He's excited, and uh, we're going to give him a green light. Thanks very much, Coach. We look forward to the game. Thank you. Happy holidays. Back to you, Reese. Holly Glenn, thank you very much. Trev, who do you like? Another fearless prediction. If Arkansas comes ready to play, they're the better team. They will win the game. If anybody comes ready to play, they should win the game. Well, Minnesota's going to win the game. They're healthier now. That's it. Well, Minnesota we might see a new look from the Gophers. You heard Mason say he's moved some people around. We'll see how that plays out. Coming up in a matter of moments in the Gaylord Hotels, Music City Bowl, and they are ready to call the Hogs. Can you guys do this with me? Point, point. Woo! Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Bowl Week, where history is made and legends live on. Number 11, Drew Bledsoe. Great throw by Drew Bledsoe. Touchdown, Washington State. Wow. Showdown time for Ron Day. And here goes the big fella. Dane cuts back, and now he's going to take it. The Madison Express touchdown. <laughs> Breeze lobs it for the end zone. Got him there. Touchdown, Isaac Joe. Drew Breeze stuck it right in there. This one is over. And today, a couple of quarterbacks looking to make themselves part of bowl lore. Matt Jones, the angular, agile quarterback from Arkansas. And his counterpart, Assad Abdul Khalik, a paragon of persistence and toughness in the pocket. On the banks of the Cumberland, it's the rumble on the river, the Gaylord Hotels. Music City Bowl today, a matchup featuring the Big Ten against the SEC. The SEC looking to snap its losing streak in this bowl game. It's Arkansas against Minnesota from the Coliseum. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, along with Bob Davey from all of us here to all of you at home. All the best in the upcoming new year. Bob, when you look at these two teams, differing types of journeys to get to the same point this game. Mark, it's a long season, and both of these teams have experienced the ups and downs of college football. Minnesota started fast. They won seven of their first eight. Unfortunately, they lost the last four. Arkansas started slow. They were three and three, but only one and three in the SEC. They got on a roll. They won the SEC West, but they lost the championship game. The great thing about this bowl game, both these teams survived the adversity, and they have, the chance, to, they have a chance to end their season on a positive with a win today. Two pretty prolific offenses today, and when you look at their respective formulas for success, they have a lot in common, don't they? Well, Mark, both these teams love to run the football. The great news for Minnesota, they have a 1,000-yard rusher in Terry Jackson. The bad news, he won't play today because of a stomach virus. Thomas DePay, more of a big physical running back, will get the start. For Arkansas, they led the SEC in rushing. 
Their tailback, Fred Talley, gained over 1,000 yards. Their second leading rusher is their quarterback, Matt Jones, who gained over 600. But it really doesn't matter who runs the football because they run behind Big Sean Andrews, 6'5", and the big tight end, Jason Peters, 6'5", 315 pounds. Mark, is very seldom we talk about two offensive linemen in the open, but these two are fun to watch. Almost 700 pounds of men up front, and they will have a tendency to be a little bit right-handed running the ball, and with good reason. Minnesota winning the toss, deferring to the second half. Arkansas will receive. And Nystrom will kick off. The Razorbacks will open up on offense. Mark, there's quite a wind here today in this stadium. Uh, I guess the good news is both of these teams do it on the ground, and I don't know if it would be that much of a factor other than what you see right here in the kicking game. Cedric Coggs and DeCorey Birmingham back deep for Arkansas. And this is the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. It'll be Coggs at the 10. Dodge taking it north-south out to the 26-yard line. And let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Guys, the last three games of the season, the Minnesota defense gave up 344 yards a game on the ground. Today, going against the SEC's top rushing team will be a challenge. As a result of that poor defensive performance down the stretch, Glenn Mason elevated linebacker coach Greg Hudson to be the defensive coordinator. He's calling his first game today. He said his players have been told nothing else but play as hard as you can. They felt like they gave up a little bit down the stretch. He wants a better effort today. We'll see if he gets it, Holly. First down and 10 from the 26-yard line. Jones with a little play fake. Going to throw it early, complete to Richard Smith for the first down and still on his feet across midfield. Mike Lehan was being worked on. Matt Jones, the starting quarterback, 20 touchdown passes to just six interceptions on the season. Won't throw it that often. Meanwhile, in the backfield, Fred Talley joined by Mark Pierce, a bruising fullback. Wilson, Smith, and Peters, the receivers. Mark, they don't throw it much, but when they throw it, they keep the tight end in, they maximum protect, and they throw it down the field in big chunks. A pickup of 29, speaking of big chunks on first down. There's Talley bouncing it to the edge, has an alley. Talley all the way down to the 20 yard line. Another big play, a pickup of 20 yards, and he is running behind a very big offensive line. We talked about Sean Andrews, the right tackle. He's joined by Bokerman, Doty, Ball, and Bo Lacey. Mark, on that last play, you saw the athleticism of Sean Andrews on the zone play. They love to pull the tackle, and he did a tremendous job on that play, kicking out the linebacker. Anthony Montgomery, one of the new starters up front on that defensive line for Minnesota. Hey, in two plays, folks. Arkansas down to the 20-yard line of the Gophers. Out of the eye, it's Talley. And he is chopped down behind the line of scrimmage at the 21-yard line by Justin Isom. Here's a look at the linebackers. Archer, Ben West, and Kyle McKenzie, a new starter since the end of the year. Kyle McKenzie getting the start today because he's more physical, a little bit bigger up front, and Mark, this secondary, these two safeties, you just saw the hit by Justin Isom, the strong safety, Eli Ward, the free safety, Minnesota's leading tackler. Minnesota backed up to its own 21-yard line on second down and 10. Jones to pass, and this is where it can hurt you. Matt Jones tiptoes out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Matt Jones, 6'5", just a sophomore, has 4'4", speed. And, Bob, he's one of those long striders, as they say in the biz, deceptively fast. Huh? Well, Mark, you hit it on the head. I don't know if I've ever seen a guy that tall, that lanky, that long of a strider who escapes people and makes people miss tackles. This year set a rushing record for quarterbacks in school history, third down and six. Tally the lone back. They run to the side option on the pitch. DeCorey Birmingham knocked out of bounds. And he is right near the first down marker. Mark, years ago, Arkansas was a wishbone team, the true triple option. Well, you just saw the 2002 version of the triple option right there. Off to the side, zone fake, reading the defensive end, but then also pitching 
using the wide receiver as the pitch back. So it's a form of the triple option. First down and goal now. Smith in motion. Here's our second string tailback. There is Howard. And Howard is brought down at the five-yard line. Howard, a bit of change of pace runner at six foot 230. Tally just 188, but a nice change, Bob. They love the areas, Howard. They say he's actually marked about 232 pounds. Houston Nutt told us yesterday he's a 4-4-40. He is the future at tailback for Arkansas. They call him the train out of the backfield. Second down and goal. The ISO play, and it's him again, Howard. This time brought down at about the three-yard line. It'll be third and goal. Ben West making the stop from his Sam linebacking position. Houston Nutt serves as the offensive coordinator for Arkansas. And Mark, he likes to throw the football. You know, several years ago, I think his first two years in the SEC, they were number one in passing offense. But because of the style of their quarterback, Matt Jones, much more of a rushing team now. Jones into the end zone. Touchdown. Great catch by George Wilson. Well, Bob, you just said that Houston Nutt likes to throw the ball when he's got the tools. There's evidence. Mark, a lot of times you see the fade. That was kind of a fade stop comeback wrap. I'm not sure if it was designed or not, but it's a touchdown for Arkansas. Jones with his 16th touchdown pass this season, the 20th of his career. Matt Jones, he doesn't throw it often, but when he does, he can be very accurate. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Colin Reed, CEO of Gaylord Entertainment. And from all of us at Gaylord Hotels, I'd like to welcome our television audience to this year's Music City Bowl. This is an important event for our company for this year for two reasons. One, for the first time we're the title sponsor, but also for the first time this bowl matches two teams, one from the Big Ten and one from the SEC. Our beautiful hotel here in Nashville, Tennessee, is very much proud to host both the University of Arkansas and the University of Minnesota. We are proud to be a sponsor of College Athletics, and on behalf of all of us from Gaylord Hotels, the city of Nashville, enjoy the game, have a safe and happy new year. Well, so far, Arkansas fans enjoying the game. Their team up 7 to nothing. You talk about setting the tone. An impressive eight-play, 74-yard drive using up just under three minutes on the clock. And a big score right off the bat for Arkansas, who leads 7 to nothing. And if you're Greg Hudson, the new defensive coordinator in Minnesota, Mark, this is definitely not how you want to start your regime right here. Jermaine Mays takes the handoff to Mike Lehan. He didn't fool anybody especially to Corey Birmingham. Let's take one more look at that Arkansas touchdown. Mark, a lot of times on the goal line when you see bump and run, you're going to see the fade route thrown to a spot on the field. But Arkansas comes back and they run the fade stop route. And George Wilson beats Yuki Dozier. So instead of the fade throw into a spot, they start to fade and then come back and st in the stop route. Well, we'll have to see if Asad Abdul Khalid and the Minnesota Golden Gopher offense can answer here. First down and 10. They start deep from their own eight-yard line. Antoine Burns in motion. A quick three-step drop. And it's incomplete intended for Aaron Hosek. Asad Abdul Khalid, 18 touchdown passes versus 11 interceptions, but more importantly, he is healthy for the first time in about two months, healing from that ankle injury. Here's a look at the skilled people, Tepe, Hosack, Burns, Patterson, and Ben Utecht, who's also very healthy and a very potent receiver. Mark, these wide receivers, Antoine Bones, Burns and Tony Peterson, they're going to have to step up and make plays after the catch because they're going to get bump and run man coverage. They have to make plays. And good news for Minnesota, Terry Jackson, who has a bit of the stomach flu virus, is in the ball game, and here he is on second down and 10, brought down at the 10-yard line. It'll be third down and about eight to go. Tony Boer making the stop on the play for Arkansas. Up front, Carter, Setterstrom, Esslinger, who's one of the stars up there, Quinn, and Millender. Esslinger, the true freshman center. They pull him a lot on the zone play. Very athletic. Up front, Arkansas's defensive line has struggled with depth at times this year. 
Not a real standout on that front as far as playmaking, but Raymond House, the leader of this football team. Third down and eight on Minnesota's first offensive series of the ball game. Burns in motion. Malik has time and finds his man for the first down at the 26-yard line. Tony Patterson, the 6'3 junior, caught the ball that was thrown behind him. Just a tremendous to throw and catch right here. And you see the throw into Patterson against zone coverage. The strong safety made a great break on that ball. It was almost intercepted, but great concentration by Patterson right there for the catch. First down and 10 from the 26-yard line after that 15-yard pickup. They come out in two tights and two wides and a single back. It's Thomas to pay. The give is to Upchurch. And they throw it downfield to Hosack. Aaron Hosack all the way down to the 23-yard line. He got him behind the safety, Bo Mosley. Mark, there's a penalty on this. It looks like offsides on Arkansas, so that play will stand. Aaron Hosack, a tall target, getting downfield, too. Glenn Mason is known for some trickery, and you're going to see right here the wide receiver on the reverse action, and Upchurch will throw the ball to the second tight end, Scooter Bogus, down the field off the play action. Excuse me, that's Aaron Hosek, the wide receiver, off the crack and go, but the reverse action to Upchurch set it up. We talked about it, boy. Glenn Mason, when you give him a little time to prepare, he'll have at least a couple of trick plays to come up with. And now Abdul Khalif audibling at the line. He checks him into a run play. And that's Thomas Tepay brought down at the 20 yard line by Wes Murphy. Let's take a look at the linebackers for the Hogs. Bua, Moore, and Miller up front there. And in the secondary, boy, they got a skilled and very quick, fast secondary. Carroll and Richardson with speed to burn on the corners. Maybe the best free safety in the country. And Ken Hamlin, a linebacker, playing in the secondary. Mark, it reminds me so much of Steve Atwater, the former great Arkansas safety. It is second down and six. Antoine Burns in motion. On the screen, wide open, to pay. Tepe wrapped up inside the 10 at the eight yard line. He got the first down, but Tony Boer made the touchdown saving tackle. Arkansas, a man-to-man -man coverage team. Mark, they turned the offset tailback, Thomas to pay loose, and a great tackle right there by Tony Boer. The linebacker really saved the touchdown, but man-to-man -to -man coverage, Minnesota releases the back end of the flat. He's unaccounted for. It's to pay and Jackson out of the eye. Here's Terry Jackson. Cutting up inside and brought down at the eight-yard line. Mark, you notice something right off the bat. Arkansas very multiple on defense with Dave Womack, the defensive coordinator, having come over from Southern Miss. But you also see Minnesota on that snap, snap it on the first sound. They get up and they're a zone blocking team, so they're not a man-to-man -man blocking team. They have some plays that can block any front. So the quick snap keeps Arkansas from jumping around a lot prior to the snap. The chess match already beginning in earnest between the two coaches, second down and goal. And you see Arkansas, uh, excuse me, Minnesota, an unbalanced line with the tackle over at tight end, and they run the option to the weak side. They whistle it dead. And it's against the Golden Gophers. Mark, when we talk about unbalanced line, Arkansas is putting, or excuse me, Minnesota is putting both tackles over on the same side and putting the tight end to the short side only to the, with the guard and tight end to the back side. So it screws up and causes confusion for man-to-man -man coverage teams like Arkansas, plus gives Minnesota a big, strong blocking front to one side. So look for the unbalanced line. Here they're back in more of a conventional formation. Arkansas getting some late personnel onto the field. And timeout called by the Razorbacks, getting their personnel in just a little bit too late. Just underway here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. We'll be right back.
Back here at the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl, Arkansas leading 7 to nothing. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down to the field. 8.22 to go in the first period. Arkansas scored on its first drive down the field, and now Minnesota with the ball from the Arkansas 13-yard line looking at second down and goal. Three receivers out to the right of quarterback Assad abdul Khalif. Thomas Tepay is the lone back. Antoine Burns in motion. The pass is incomplete at the three-yard line intended for Jared Ellison, who is working on Lawrence Richardson. Mark, you're going to see a lot of man-to-man -man coverage in Arkansas's corners. Lawrence Richardson, number one, Ahmad Carroll, number eight, and then Eddie Jackson, number 30. All three of them track athletes at Arkansas. And Arkansas is a great track program, so they have three corners that can run and are very confident. You're going to see a lot of bump and run coverage on the outside. Bob, this is the ninth play of the Minnesota drive. Drive that started on their own eight-yard line. Third down and goal to go. Burns in motion again. The blitz off the edge to pay. Stays in bounds, but is stopped up short of the end zone at the seven-yard line by Ahmad Carroll, a.k.a. Batman. And it's fourth and goal. Once again, Minnesota comes back and tries to pick and get the fullback, Thomas pay out on the route. Here you see him right here, sneaking underneath the pick route by Antoine Burns. It's the play that Minnesota ran earlier. This time, Arkansas fights through the traffic and makes a play for a short game. And nice for meanwhile, the place kicker for Minnesota closing in on a career record. Second in Big Ten history right now, closing in on Travis Dorsch, formerly of Purdue. He's made his last 11 attempts in a row. This one to come from 24 yards out. Mark, something you see on field goals this close. Notice Minnesota with an unbalanced line to the field. Helps him on protection, the angle of the ball, and the kick is good. Knocks it through, and Minnesota's on the board. That's his 67th career field goal. That one from 24 yards out. Hey, the Golden Gophers pretty impressive on their opening drive. We'll be right back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Presented by Gaylord Hotels. Accommodations provided by Gaylord Hotels. Created with you in mind. And in part by the Nashville Conventions and Visitors Bureau. For detailed information on escaping to Nashville, call 800-657-6910. There's a look inside the Opryland Hotel where both teams stayed this week. And, man, not many places you can take a little boat ride around your hotel near the lobby, huh, Bob? I'll tell you what, <laughs> we were out in Las Vegas last week, Mark, and there were some big hotels. This one might be the biggest, though. What an impressive place. Yeah, it's like being at Disney World. Minnesota's opening drive, 10 plays, 84 yards, eclipsing a little over four minutes on the clock. They cash in with a 24-yard field goal. And it's 7-3. to three. Minnesota coming in, having dropped its last four consecutive games. So Glenn Mason's team looking to finish things off on the right track. As the Corey Birmingham back for the kick. Birmingham at the three. And dragged down from behind at the 25-yard line. Well, folks, Capital One Bowl Week double dipping, continuing on ESPN at 5.30 Eastern. Wake Forest looks to stop Oregon. Don't miss the number two and the second annual Seattle Bowl. Wake Forest, Bob, with one of the better rush offenses. I believe they led the ACC in running the ball. You're right, Mark. And, uh, very similar to, you, to Arkansas's running game with a lot of the quarterback option type things out of the one back set. There's a flag down on the play. We had offsides on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. They're going to do it again. Clint Mason, the former coach of the year in 1999, his team back in a bowl game after a sabbatical a season ago. They've gone to a bowl game in four of the last five years. One thing about Coach Mason that you notice is always very relaxed in his demeanor. And so far, anyway, on the opening drive, offensively, his team reflecting that. A lot of poise, a lot of cool in the pocket. 
demonstrated by his quarterback, Abdul Khalid. I agree, Mark, and both these coaches have done just tremendous jobs. And when you play a bowl game, you always get into the conversation, is it the last game of this year or the first game of next year? And I think for both of these teams, because there's so few seniors on the field, it is the first game of next year. These are young football teams. We're here in Nashville, Tennessee, the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. I'm Mark Jones, along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down in the field. This is Cedric Cox on the kickoff return, tripped up at the 15, and is brought down right away. If you've just joined us, here's a look at the first score of the game. Matt Jones from Arkansas on the edge to George Wilson on the touchdown reception. That was on their opening drive, and then Minnesota responded with an 80-plus yard drive of their own, capped it off with a field goal from 24 yards out. First and 10 Razorbacks from the 16-yard line. The SEC, folks, has never won in this bowl game. They are 0-4. This year, they have a new conference opponent in the Big Ten. It used to be the Big East. Nice spin move by Fred Talley. He's brought down after a gain of about two on the play by Justin Isom. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, right now, the, the turf footing is becoming an issue for some of these players. This turf was put in last Sunday. The Tennessee Titans actually paid for it because they will now have home field advantage in the playoffs. But during the middle of the field, hash mark to hash mark, you can see it coming up in tusk. The players really struggling right now. Keep your eye on how that affects them. All right, Holly, second down and eight. Two tight end, two wide outs. Jones on the out pattern. Incomplete intended for Richard Smith. It'll be third down now for Arkansas with about eight to go. Mark, can you talk about this turf? Holly just talked this a little loose down there. That's probably good news for Minnesota with the little tailback Fred Talley that relies on quickness. But if you look back on Minnesota's season against Wisconsin on artificial surface, Anthony Davis, 300 yards at home against Iowa. Freddie Russell, about 200 yards from Iowa on artificial surface. So the good news is maybe it's a slow track today for Minnesota. Trying to buck the trend for the Gophers. The handoff goes to Talley, who's brought down short of the first down at the 19-yard line by Paul Nixon, the defensive end for Minnesota. You're going to see the undersized defensive end, Paul Nixon, right here chase from the backside and make the play. But one thing, Mark, we talk about the decide zone. If Matt Jones would have kept it, he had rushing yardage. So look for Arkansas to come back, take advantage of that aggressiveness by Nixon, the defensive end. Look out for Jermaine Mays, number 15. He has blocked four punts for Minnesota this year, two of them for touchdowns. There's Jermaine Mays right here on the outside. He does a great job rushing on that slot back. Richie Butler on the snap, and they brought some pressure, and they made some contact. There's a flag down. And it wasn't a great punt either. Jared Ellerson, number 83, ran into Butler, the punter. Minnesota claiming that the punt was tipped. They better hope it was tipped, Mark, because if it wasn't, it's a personal foul penalty. The ball was tipped. They picked the flag up. They say that it was indeed tipped. And the Gophers will have great field position at Arkansas's 33. From the outside, you're going to see Gerald Ellerson Right there, it was very hard to see if that ball was tipped, but it looks like the trajectory coming out of there of the football changed. Yeah, it looked like he got a bit of it. I think he did, and that was Jared Ellison coming in. Minnesota with great field position set up by their defense. Mark rising to the challenge there on the second series by Arkansas. Just a 14-yard net on that punt. First and 10 for Minnesota. The toss out of the eye. This is Jackson. Trying to get to the edge, never really got a seam. Brought down at the 33-yard line by Ken Hamlin and Caleb Miller. And right away, you see Ken Hamlin, the free safety, up on a toss sweep, creating a negative play for Arkansas's defense. Mark, this guy will flat wow. hit you. And their secondary setup where they have great coverage corners, which allows Ken Hamlin to play as a robber and play downhill like a linebacker. He's Arkansas's all-time leader in stops out of Memphis, Tennessee. Second down and 10. 
And it's play fake. Abdul Khalif looks to throw it back the other way. And it's almost intercepted and incomplete. He wanted to throw that ball back against the grain, but nobody was there. It's third and ten. What Minnesota tried to do there, Mark, was sprint one way and set up the throwback screen to the backside. Here you see the tight end, Hosack, slipping across the field, but he's well covered by the linebacker. So Abdul Khalid gets away with a poor decision right here, and fortunately that ball was thrown out of bounds. You see the athleticism as well as of Ken Hammond. Third down and 10 from the 33. Arkansas in man-free coverage right here, coming with a five-man rush. They're in the draw. Jackson brought down immediately, but flags all over the field. On the far side of the field, number eight, Ahmad Carroll jammed up the gopher receiver before the snap. It's against Arkansas. Yeah, they definitely moved early. Not many times do you see the corner offsides. <laughs> Little eager on the jamming at the line. I'll tell you what, Deion Sanders <laughs> started all this stuff. When we look right there at the screen, he's up bump and run, wanting to get up in his face. A little premature, but I'll tell you what, these two corners from Arkansas love to play and love to compete. So that's not going to get him to back off, Mark. I promise you. Not a bit. They don't call him Batman for nothing. Put it down in five. Bill Palik incomplete intended for Tony Patterson. It'll be fourth down. They are in field goal range, though. And in comes the field goal unit. Mark, you really do notice how soft this field is. I, I see a lot of players slipping here, and it's early in the football game. This would tie the Big Ten record if Dan Nystrom makes this kick. Just one behind Travis Dorsch of Purdue. Coming from 45 yards out. He's already made one today from 24. And this guy is true. And he ties the Big Ten field goal record. And puts Minnesota just one point behind Arkansas. From Nashville, Tennessee. A little bit of Big Ten Conference history as nice for knocks it through. We'll be right back. The sweet melodies of country music all around here in Nashville, Tennessee. There's a look at uh, all the boots out of Bob Davies' closet in his Texas A&M days, huh? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. What size are you wearing? About a 12. I'm about a 12 myself. I've got some ostrich skin boots at home that I never wear. Hook me up. I'm going to hook you up and send them to you. Hook me up. Because I know it. you look good in anything. You know I'm a big Toby Keith guy, too. Put that on my CD. Meanwhile, Dan Nystrom eclipsing Travis Dorsch's uh, scoring record in the Big Ten as well with 365 points. Pardon me, 56 points. After that last field goal. Snapped a couple of records on one kick. Minnesota down by one. Birmingham at the eight. And chopped down immediately at the 22-yard line. Tomorrow, Capital One Bowl Week continuing three games on ESPN. Beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern time, it's College Game Day Bowl Special presented by Outback. Boise State against Iowa State at noon. Then the Axa Liberty Bowl. Colorado State against TCU. And then the Chick-fil-A Beach Bowl. Tennessee taking on Maryland. Boy, what about Tennessee and Maryland? Casey Clausen saying some things, Bob, about his uh, receivers. Wonder if anyone's going to be blocking and catching for him tomorrow. Well, you have a good point. And how about the job Ralph Friedgen? Maybe as improved as any team in this country from the first week of the season when they played Notre Dame to the last week of the season when they beat Wake Forest. Bowl's becoming a regular thing there in College Park. First down and 10. Jones on the long out. Demonstrating a bit of arm strength. George Wilson on the catch. Yuki Dozier making the stop. The big man right here, Sean Andrews, just dwarfs closely the defensive end. Look at the size difference. And Houston Nutt told us yesterday that he wanted to throw the football more on first down. Excellent throw right there by Matt Jones. 
First down and 10 on the pickup of 11. Pally stopped up, tried to run over the left side of that offensive line. And Mark, I'm sorry, we, we talked about, you mentioned during the break how both these teams seem to have deviated from the norm right. and are throwing the football. I think it gets back to the point we made about this being the first game of next year. Both these coaches realize they have to throw the football better to get to where they want to get next season. So the month of preparation for this game, basically, you see a little bit more of what they need to do next year. Second down and 10, Jones. Looking to throw and now taking off. Letting up the back of his own offensive lineman, number 71, Mark Bokerman. And he's brought down right near the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and long. What you're going to see is Smith right here is going to end up being wide open against man-to-man -man coverage. But Matt Jones, that picture replay is deceiving because Matt Jones actually sprinted away from the receiver. Really had no chance to see him. Third down and 11 to go. Got to get to the 45-yard line for the first down. Play fake by Jones, ran into the official, and is brought down short of the first down of the 37-yard line by Terrence Campbell. And they'll have to punt. Uh, Jones, a lot of traffic there between the tackles. Well, it's tough enough, but when the umpire gets into the fray, he's got to keep his head up. <laughs> if he's going to step up there and try to make a tackle, he better get in a better football position keep his head up and I promise you his eyes were closed right there. his eyes were not open praying for his life fourth down not as much pressure that time by the Gophers a high spiral by Butler and a flag down that's going to be a halo violation Danny Upchurch on the return that was called the Trev Alberts violation right there because I know how much Trev Alberts loves the halo rule loves it doesn't he <laughs> a 40 yard punt six on the return they'll tack some more yards on it and Minnesota will get some pretty decent starting field position here. Interference with the opportunity to catch a kick by the kicking team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Mark, I think he is inside two yards. So that's pretty obvious right there by Ahmad Carroll. He does a good job of breaking down. He just broke down too close to Upchurch. But I think Arkansas does an excellent job right here of blocking Jermaine Mays. You're going to see Jermaine Mays up, and he tries to go underneath the slot. He blocked the punt against Wisconsin, and just an excellent job right there by Jamar Gallon of taking away that inside move. Abdul Kalik has Utech and overthrows him. He got in behind the free safety Hamlin, and Ben Utech a big tight end with good downfield speed. You saw an example of it there. More college football action as Capital One Bowl Week continues tomorrow on ESPN2. Two more games, the Silicon Valley Football Classic, Fresno State taking on Georgia Tech, and then the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl, Air Force taking on number 19, Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech speaking of special teams with one of the better special teams units in the country. Second down and 10. Near miss just moments ago by Abdul Khalif. On the bootlegs, got some room. Pushed out of bounds at the 41-yard line by Caleb Miller. Gain of about six. The great news for Minnesota, Assad Abdul Khalif is healthy. He comes here on the bootleg. Khalif Miller loses contain and look out because number six is coming. Good decision by Assad. He's healthy, healthy for this game, Mark, for the first time this year. Stay away from number six, but if you want to stay healthy. Third down and about three to go for Minnesota. Ellison split wide to the bottom of your screen. Burns in motion. The three-step drop complete to Jared Ellison for the first down. On Arkansas side of midfield, he was working on Ahmad Carroll. It really helps Minnesota that they are a three-step drop, quick slant team anyhow. That's their basic offense. And here you're going to see Ahmad Carroll playing off coverage, 
and Assad Cup of Dukalik just zings it in there, and uh, uh, Carroll's going to be forced to make the tackle. But Mark, Minnesota is a quick three-step team anyhow, so all this confusion at Arkansas and man coverage at Arkansas plays doesn't affect them quite as much. Bill Kalik has Utech, the tight end, in open space. Made two guys miss and got down to the 43-yard line. A pickup of about seven on the play. There you see where the health of Ben Utech makes a big difference, his ability to run the ball. Suffering from stress fractures earlier in the season, finally about 100%, and what difference it makes for Glenn Mason's offense. Well, he's a great singer, Mark. We've heard that story. He actually <laughs> yeah. sings... He sings us for some big time events and we tried to get him to sing, but he went horse on us. Oh, we were going to put it on the air on ESPN oh, national yeah. television. This is the town to do it in. Second down and four. Terry Jackson stopped up behind the line of scrimmage. Let's go downstairs for more on UTEC from Holly Rowe. Guys, you say Ben Utech is finally healthy this season. Well, knock on wood, because you said he got his voice lost yesterday, and it's because he's getting sick. He's playing today with the cold. He said he's got a lot of energy, and he feels fine. But his only healthy game all year, and he comes down sick. <laughs> it's been something that's running through the entire Minnesota team. We told you earlier that Terry Jackson was bothered by the stomach flu, also affecting Ben Utech. But here they are now on third down and four. Got to get to the 39-yard line for a first down. They converted last time. And they make the catch. Patterson got the first down at the 36-yard line. Mosley making the stop on the play. So a nice dart by Abdul Khalid. One thing, if you're going to play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, you have two excellent corners, but you're going to have to have your strong safety cover one of those wideouts. There, Bo Mosley, the starting strong safety today, is locked on Patterson, a wide receiver. Good play call by Minnesota. Well, the first 15 minutes of the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl is in the books, and Houston Nuts team leading with, by the score of 7-6 to six when we come back. Back for the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl on the banks of the Cumberland River, Arkansas leading by a score of seven to six. Arkansas Razorbacks on their first drive of the ball game looking very impressive and fans and players alike flexing their collective muscles right now. Asad Abdul Khalik in Minnesota with the ball at the Arkansas 36. First down and 10. And a play fake. He's looking for UTEC. Leak throws it and it's incomplete. Let's take a look at our ESPN game track. Talked about the efficiency of the opening drive offensively for Arkansas. Wilson capped it off with a two yard touchdown catch from Jones. And then Nystrom with a couple of field goals eclipsing the Big Ten points record set previously by Travis Doris, formerly of Purdue. And that's where we are right now, 7 to 6. And Bob, so far, one of the other surprises, the amount of passing in the game by both teams. Well, and particularly for Minnesota, here you see Minnesota getting up quick to the line of scrimmage, trying to catch Arkansas before they're ready. Thomas Tepay moving the pile a little bit down to the 31-yard line. Have about five yards to go for the first down. Jeb Huckabee with the stop, the middle linebacker. Third down and about uh, five to go for Minnesota. Mark, I think really a good plan here by Glenn Mason and Tony Peterson, the offensive coordinator for Minnesota. Different ways to attack a multiple, multiple defense like Arkansas. There you see get up to the line of scrimmage and snap it quick. We've seen unbalanced line. We've seen thrown to the back. We've seen play action and boot pass. A lot of different looks right now trying to keep Arkansas off balance. And third and five, they run the ball. Jackson. Brought down at the 24-yard line, got the first down for Minnesota. They've been able to convert pretty well on third down today so far. Another way to keep a blitzing defense off balance, run the zone play on third and five. And here you see Terry Jackson hitting it up in there and Ken Hamlin the free safety. But Mark, good job of keeping Arkansas back on their heels right now on defense as we get a look at Dave Womack, the defensive coordinator of Arkansas. And that, uh, Popular defense sometimes at 3 3 5 that we've seen quite a bit of this year. Once again, man coverage, bump and run at the top of the field. 
Another quick three-step drop going up top. Incomplete. Intended for Tony Patterson and a flag on the play. He was working on Bo Mosley, who's filling in for Jimmy Beasley, who was injured earlier this week in pa practice. You see the matchup already. Let's get Patterson, the third wide receiver, on the strong safety, Bo Mosley. Pass interference on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. It's going to be a first down and 10 for Minnesota. You're going to see it right here. This is a corner. He's supposed to be a bump and run guy, but now because of three wide receivers, you get your strong safety man to man, and Minnesota is going after Mosley. Mosley athletically gifted, maybe more so than Beasley, but doesn't have the experience that Beasley has. Well, and you see the lack of experience in turning and playing the football. Bo Mosley with good coverage. He was in phase with the receiver, Patterson. He just didn't have the confidence, Mark, to look back and make a play on the ball at the appropriate time. About the 10th play of the Minnesota drive on first down and 10 from the 12-yard line. Jackson spinning it into the boundary. Brought down at the nine, got about three. Tony Bua making the tackle from his Will linebacking spot. Minnesota, a big zone blocking team. Here you see the center pulling around, and you see Terry Jackson hitting it up in there. When you're a zone blocking team, Mark, that means you block areas. You don't have to worry as much about man-to-man -man Trying to figure out who your man is with these multiple fronts of Arkansas. So it kind of plays into Minnesota's hands right now. To pay now the single back on second down and seven. Jackson lost his shoe. On the fade, Utex couldn't come up with it. And it'll be third down. Eddie Jackson defending the taller Ben Utex. Ben Utex was a wide receiver when he first came to Minnesota. Now he's six foot six, and you see him go up and just try to get in a jump ball situation. Pretty good play call. Eddie Jackson, number 30 on the cover. Meanwhile, the son of Bill Felipe, six of 13 passing to 55 yards. And here they are on third down. They've been able to convert quite a few times in this situation today. Arkansas jumping around. Mark, look at the different looks on defense. They Minnesota run runs the ball. Tepay plowing his way down to the five-yard line, but he'll be about a yard or two short of the first down. And in once again comes the gopher field goal unit. If Nystrom makes this field goal, he would hold the record by himself. Mark, this is an excellent position right here for a fake field goal. If you're Glenn Mason, I realize three points put you on top, 9-7 but I also realize his defense has given up a lot of points, particularly in the last three ball games. Good position on the field for a fake. We've already seen him run one trick play today. That's cash money. Nystrom now holds the record alone in the Big Ten on the field goal from 21 yards out. Under 12 minutes to go in the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. Minnesota with the lead. Arkansas and Minnesota, the SEC against the Big Ten. The SEC looking for its first win in the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. Previously going 0-4 against the Big East Conference. And Dan Nystrom now holding both Big Ten records in points and field goals. He has three field goals today. Minnesota with a 9-7 lead. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe down in the field. This is Birmingham from the 11. The Corey Birmingham pushed out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. Mark, all Division 1A football coaching jobs are filled. Not so in the NFL. Dave Campo with the Cowboys, Tom Coughlin with the Jaguars, Dick LeBeau with the Bengals all out. For continuing coverage of the changes in the NFL coaching scene, you can tune over to ESPN News and the Monday Quarterback. Right now we go back to Nashville. All right, Reese, and uh, interesting how Bill Parcells' name has uh, been very prominent and circulating of late in some of those coaching circles and vacancies. First and 10, Jones to pass. Completes it into the boundary to George Wilson. Right near the first down marker. And Minnesota's defense 
has held since that opening drive in stark contrast to late in the season when they gave up a lot of yards, Bob, on the ground in particular. Well, Mark, and they played some great rushing teams when you look at Wisconsin, Iowa, and Michigan. But the bottom line in the last three games, they gave up 6.7 yards every time the ball was snapped. So you see Minnesota right now playing with some more confidence than we saw late in the season. Handed off to the fullback, Pierce, who's brought down after a gain of about two. For more, let's go downstairs to Holly. Greg Hudson, the new defensive coordinator for Minnesota, spent the first three days as the defensive coordinator meeting individually with each player. He said he was surprised to find from those meetings that the players wanted to be pushed more, challenged more, and coached harder. He also said he wants to make his defense accountable. So in every meeting, they went through every defensive call. He would have somebody who was on an island or might need help during that defensive call to stand up and say, guys, this is the teammate you have to help support. He said it built them uh, together unity that they're showing today. All right, Holly, the pass incomplete at the 40-yard line in Tim and Smith and Bob You're a firm believer that if you give players equity in their defense, then they perform better, much like Hudson seems to be doing? Oh, there's no question about that, Mark. And I think Greg Hudson will do a great job. And I think Glenn Mason made the move at the right time. Coming off a successful season, but ending on a negative. And Greg Hudson, the first thing he did was get some more size on the field particularly Anthony Montgomery, number 95, up front. Cedric Cobbs now in a tailback. Alone back in this three-receiver formation. Jones takes off on his own and is brought down right at the line of scrimmage, way short of the first down. And the 52, Kyle McKenzie making the stop. And Arkansas is ready to punt once again. That offense has really stalled since that opening drive. Well, you can see if you make Arkansas throw the football, and no one in the SEC made them throw the football. They were number one in the league in rushing offense. But if you make them throw it, you can stop them. Jermaine Mays. They stopped him and blocked him up well. Upchurch stopped up immediately after catching the ball at the 16-yard line. A 38-yard punt by number 38. We'll be right back. Look at part of the scenes here on Broadway, all the way from there, all the way down to Commerce Street. Last night, a lot of action. The place was really abuzz with activity for the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Bamba caught the tail end of the Battle of the Bands. I would have to give the edge to Minnesota. Just a slight edge, a very slight edge. Well, I'm a front runner though, you know that about me. <laughs> Mark, we talk about these coaches doing great jobs. Minnesota, this is the eighth bowl game in the history of their program. This is Glenn Mason's third bowl game at Minnesota. So, incredible job by Glenn Mason getting this program back on track. First down and 10, out of the eye. Little play fake. Going downtown for Burns, and he's got him. Complete at the 33-yard line. He got him behind Ahmad Carroll on the post. A pickup of 49 yards on the completion. Straight man-to-man -man coverage. You're going to see play action to the weak side, and then just the post route with no safety help, and you've got your corner on an island. Great play call and then a great route by Antoine Burns. Gets in behind Ahmad Carroll and a great throw by Saad al You see Minnesota Mark continue to throw the football on running down. Breaking tendency maybe a little bit. Terry Jackson over the left side running over Carter and Sederson. Brought down by Ken Hamler. We talked moments ago about the Battle of the Bands. This was the scene downtown last night. They were high stepping. They brought their serious A game last night, Bob. Well, we got to give Minnesota's band credit. 13 hour bus ride down here for this game <laughs> for budgetary reasons, but their athletic director came on that bus ride with them. He might be playing the tuba today for it, all we it, know it's of that. A, it's all about team, Bob. You got it. Abdul Khalif, complete to Utah. He stopped up shy of the 25 at the 26 by Ken Hamlin. Coming into the season, Ben Utech, one of the highest rated tight ends in the country, Mark, has had an assortment of injuries. But when he's on and Asad Abdul Khalik is on, you can see why Minnesota is really good statistically offensively in the Big Ten. 
Set up to a Kalik, 8 of 15 passing for 110 yards. Third down and two. To Pay and Jackson out of the eye. Little option package here. Kalik kicks it himself and is brought down at the 25-yard line. Boy, we've called Tony Bua's name a lot today, Bob. He's been very active on defense. He is active, Mark, and he's kind of the combination linebacker strong safety that we see just about every week in college football right now. It keeps you from having to go nickel and put five defensive backs in it. It's going to be fourth down and short. Watch for Minnesota to get up there quick and snap the ball, Mark. Give it to Tepe, and he's got the first down, and then some Thomas Tepe all the way down to the 17-yard line, tackled by Ken Hamlin. You have to feel good for that guy. He's been injured a lot in his career. Finally, more healthy this season. Yeah, Mark, and you have a tailback at fullback. They just come with a simple fullback belly, zone blocking, and you see the weakness that Arkansas has. They're not very big up front. They're an active swarming kind of defense with a lot of undersized guys out there and Minnesota has them back on their heels Minnesota moving the ball down the field once again August in motion they run it into the boundary with Jackson turns the edge all the way down to the five yard line and another golden gopher first down it's first and goal Minnesota we're going to come back now. You're going to see Thomas DePay out here, number 44, leading this zone play. Excellent block by DePay and Tony Bua with another tackle, Mark. But Minnesota's got it rolling right now. First down and goal. Terry Jackson became the man when Tellus Redmond went early for the NFL. Marion Barber III was injured. Suddenly, Jackson was the show and stays that way on first and goal. They give it to DePay, who's brought down immediately at the five-yard line. For more on Tepe, let's go down to Holly. Guys, when Thomas Tepe got to campus, his first practice as a Golden Gopher, he took the ball, ran smack into their great defensive end, Karan Riley, and knocked him cold. They said that he is a bruising back. He's always had that potential, but foot and ankle problems, he's never been able to show his potential. Talk about healthy. He's finally laying the wood on some Arkansas Razorbacks. And right here, we're going to see Tepe coming out, getting a block on that last play, Mark. So you see him run it. And then you see him block. Total package. Abdul Kalik into the end zone, incomplete. Intended for UTEP, no flag on the play. It was defended well by Lawrence Richardson. And you see the explosiveness of Lawrence Richardson. I mean, he just accelerated right there to make a play on that football. Richardson leads the team in interceptions and just barely deflected that one away. Those are the ball resting just outside the five on third down and goal. You know, we've seen Minnesota run jailbreak screens in the red zone. We've also seen them throw the fade, Mark. But this is a jailbreak screen position on the field. Abdul Kalik in the end zone, knocked away nicely by Eddie Jackson, and it's fourth and goal. Intended for Tony Patterson, and in comes the field goal unit. Well, it's Eddie Jackson on Tony Patterson, man to man. And what Tony Patterson wanted was the hand on the back prior to the ball getting in. Let's just see. Right here, he's all over him. But a great effort getting that left hand in there to put the ball down. The question was, was the right arm draped over before the left arm made contact with that ball, Mark? Didn't see it on him there on the replay. This field goal from 22 yards out. And so far, it's Dan Nystrom, 12, Arkansas, 7. But you have to feel that somewhere that's a bit of a victory for the Arkansas defense. We'll be right back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Brought to you by O Charlie's. Good food and good times start with O. And by the all new 220 horsepower Mazda 6 Sports Sedan. An absolutely resplendent day for a college football day game. Minnesota leading 12 to 7. Meanwhile, Dan Nystrom setting a Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl record. 
with four field goals in a game. Yeah, He's Minnesota, Mark, excuse me, scoring on all four possessions. That's the good news. Yeah, the bad news? It's only field goals on four possessions. Yeah. And if you're Arkansas right now, you're only down five. Get back to running the football to the right behind Big Sean Andrews and that big tight end, Jason Peters. The offense just hasn't had a chance to be on the field much, frankly. On the return, that's Dedrick Poole. Brought down almost immediately. Folks, Capital One Bowl Week continuing New Year's Eve triple dip on ESPN. Noon Eastern, it's the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Boise State taking on Iowa State. Number 21, Colorado State against TCU in the Axel Liberty Bowl. And the Chick-fil-A Beach Bowl featuring Tennessee against number 18, Maryland. And, uh, boy, if you haven't seen Seneca Wallace, what a treat he'll be in that first game. Quarterback for Iowa State. They've fallen off a little bit this year, but still one of the more exciting players in college football. First down and 10, that's Jason Peters in motion. Fred Talley got whacked by Daryl Reed. If you're Arkansas, what got you to the SEC championship was lining up and running the football. And I know everybody, all those Arkansas fans, want to see you throw it more and become more diversified. If you're used to that, get on behind the big boy right here. He blocks out the whole screen. <laughs> and run the ball to your right. That time they ran the draw back to the left. Oh, yeah, Sean Andrews with the, a lot of junk in the trunk back there. He's a big fella. 350, and Jones on the move. In the flat complete to Tally, who's also on the move. And a first down out over the 40-yard line, tackled by Justin Eisen. Well, you see the uncertainty of Matt Jones when he's forced to throw the football. Here he steps up. He's not really sure. He won't hang in the pocket. But the good news, he gets it out to Fred Talley. And watch this lick right here by Justin Isom. This is number 20 on number 20, and a great collision. Mark, these two safeties from Minnesota, Eli Ward and Justin Isom, the flat hit you too. Out of the eye, here's Talley again. Brought down immediately the 42-yard line. The tackle made by Mark Lossley. Second down and about eight to go for Arkansas. Arkansas winners in six of the last seven games before losing in the SEC championship game 30 to 3 against Georgia That's the downer that they're dealing with and Houston Nutt trying to press the right buttons get his team back on track this afternoon But to bring up a good point they voted first of all whether or not to go to a bowl game or not And then they voted whether to go to Shreveport the Independence Bowl or here to the Music City Bowl So Houston Nutt put it back on the players to decide what they wanted to do Second down and 10, a little movement up front. Flags down, tally down at the 37-yard line, but Darryl Reed apparently moving a little bit early up front for Minnesota. Mark, that offsides is a big call because Arkansas had a negative play on first down. This gets him back to second and five right here. All right, and Bob... Uh, Special salute going out to the members of the 86th Airlift Wing out of Ramston Air Base, Germany, watching today's Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl on the American Forces Network. These folks fly the big Air Force transport planes, and thanks for getting people and supplies to all of our men and women of Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan and all points in between. Thanks, folks. Second down and five. Jones keeps it himself. Made one man miss, and Mike Lehan brings him down across midfield at the 48-yard line. Mike Lehan, one of just a few seniors for Minnesota, playing his last game. Matt Jones comes with the decide play, pulls it. Terrence Campbell's in great position to make the tackle. Mark, we saw this on film repeatedly. Matt Jones, for a big, long-legged guy, makes the defenders miss. It's amazing the knack he has for that. Right. A lot faster and quicky, quicker than he appears. Third down and one. Tally got the first down. Made it to the 44-yard line, and he keeps the chains yeah, moving for tally. Arkansas. Arkans Arkansas runs first to down, the Arkansas. right, and they come with the power. Here they come right here. They double down, and you're going to see the Minnesota fullback 44, kick out, and Tally sneak up into that crease. Excellent cutback 
by Fred Talley. Once again, Bob, we see one of those little backs hiding behind a big offensive line. First down and 10. Here he is again. Talley this time stopped up at the line of scrimmage. Talley was Fred the first Talley. Arkansas the running carry. back to rush for over 1,000 yards since 1995 when Madre Hill did it for the Razorbacks. Had four games this season where he rushed for over 100 yards and didn't start off the season as the starter. The start of this year was actually Cedric Cobbs, then about three games into it. Number 20, Tally took over and has been the guy ever since. A breakout game for him coming against Auburn when he ran for over 200. Second down and nine. Jones on the long out completes it. And when he does decide to throw it, He's shown some accuracy today. The pass complete to Richard Smith, who was working on Yuki Doja. First down and 10 in Arkansas. Arkansas. Minnesota playing quarters coverage. Yuki Dozier, great job right there by Richard Smith of selling the deep route. Yuki Dozier had to play deep, and then Richard Smith comes back for the deep out. Excellent throw as well, marked by Matt Jones. It sure was. First down and 10. Three receiver formation. Jones checking at the line audibly. Goes back the other way. Lots of contact down the sideline. No flag. It's incomplete. Intended for Sparky Hamilton. Bruce Davis, what do you have for us at halftime? Well, Mark, we're going to deliver a wake-up call in Seattle for our second half of our doubleheader here on the next to the last day of 2002. And we'll also talk about New Year's Eve, a plate full of bowl games. Trev says he's going to kiss somebody. Not going to be me, so maybe we'll talk about that. And no vacancy in the 1A coaching situation. We'll talk about some vacancies in the NFL. It's all coming up to half. All right, Reese, second down and 10 now for Arkansas. Jones on the option, met. The safety, Justin Ison, came back and played a little matchup football and whacked the quarterback. Your move, Houston Knight. Arkansas comes with the zone option. Once again, you see Justin Isom, the strong safety, jumping up and making the play on the quarterback for a loss. Former transfer from Butler University, walked on in Minnesota, eventually earning himself a full ride, now a junior. Third down and 13 for Arkansas. Jones to Talley. Talley chopped down at the 31-yard line. Boy, that gopher defense is really bringing the wood. Mike Lehan making the tackle that time. You see again how uncomfortable Matt Jones is. He flips the ball out to Talley, and you're going to see Michael Lehan, the corner, come up and kind of cross-body block him and get him down on the ground. It's fourth down and nine to go. And in comes the field goal unit led by David Carlton, who this year is 12 of 16 on field goal attempts with a long of 47. And Minnesota calls a timeout with 2.03 to go in the first half. And we're going to call a timeout with them. The Golden Gopher defense looking kind of golden right now. We'll be right back. Fourth down and long. And Arkansas is going for it. With the ball at the 31. Nine yards to go. They are 7 of 20 on fourth down this season. Jones with plenty of time. Incomplete in the end zone. His receiver, Richard Smith, ran out of space. And Minnesota will take over on down. Jones, when given time to make a play, almost comes up with him right there. Minnesota, Mark, decided to play maximum coverage right there. Matt Jones had a chance to scramble around a little bit, but unfortunately, number eight, Richard Smith, was out of bounds when he caught, when he caught the football. So that play, 11, the 11th play of the Arkansas drive, no points to show for. And the two minutes to go in the first half. Terry Jackson out to the 35-yard line. Folks, more great college football action as Capital One Bowl Week continues tomorrow on ESPN2. It's the Silicon Valley Football Classic. 
Fresno State taking on Georgia Tech, followed by the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl Air Force taking on Virginia Tech at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. That's tomorrow on ESPN2. Boy, Chad Gailey getting Georgia Tech into a bowl game in his first year. Second down and six. Jackson brought down immediately at the 30 by Brandon Holmes, and it's third down. And 11 to go. Mark, I'm a little surprised that Arkansas doesn't call time out here. Well, as you say that, Bob, Houston Nutt imploring his defense to remain stout, and they call a timeout. They have one remaining. We'll be right back. There is a start. There is a finish. And in the journey between, there are dreams. The NCAA Hall of Champions keeps these dreams alive for you. More than a museum, the NCAA Hall of Champions takes you on an interactive journey. Relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of a student athlete. At the NCAA Hall of Champions, you'll find something for every fan. Discover what it means to be a champion. The journey begins inside. Last year, only one university in America had students winning this unique combination of the nation's most competitive academic awards, a Rhodes Scholarship, a British Marshall Scholarship, two National Science Foundation Fellowships, three Barry Goldwater Scholarships, a Morris Udall Scholarship, and a James Madison Fellowship. The University of Arkansas, a nationally competitive, student-centered research university serving Arkansas and the world. Matt Jones, quarterback for Arkansas on the bench as he watches the Minnesota offense operate under Assad Abdul Khalik with the ball on the 30-yard line with 109 to play here in the first half. Third down and 11. A three-receiver formation for Minnesota. They're four of nine on third downs today. Jackson on the little screen. And it's thrown up immediately at the 28-yard line by Ahmad Carroll. Way short of the first down. And Arkansas uses its final timeout. Minnesota going three and out on that series. Capital One Bowl Week double dipping. Continuing on ESPN at 5.30 Eastern. Wake Forest looks to stop Oregon. And don't miss the second annual Seattle Bowl. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Here's a look at the history of the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Uh, the SEC, Bob, taking it on the chin. Georgia, Ole Miss, Kentucky, and Alabama, all losers against various competition. All coming from the, uh, well, uh, two from the Big East and uh, two from the, uh, yeah, well, actually all from the Big East. Well, like any stat, I think that's a little bit deceiving, though, because the SEC always takes their fifth or sixth ranked team, I believe, to the Music City, and the Big East took their second third or their third or fourth team so uh, they normally play a higher ranked team but you're right the sec has not had much success and i think mark minnesota good decision to play conservative on that last series because arkansas is a takeaway defense 19 interceptions and 17 fumble recoveries on the season so they cause turnovers. so glenn mason playing it pretty safe yeah they're number four in the nation in turnover margin First time Arkansas stopped Minnesota today. Justin Bruning with the punt. And Birmingham stopped up at the 38-yard line after that 36-yard punt. One of the stories of the game, the run defense for the Gophers, Bob. No question about it. I mean, that was the storyline coming into the game, Mark. Could Minnesota hold up against the number one ranked rush offense in the SEC? Other than the first series, no question that they have done that. You have to salute defensive coordinator Greg Hudson. Arkansas averaging 230 yards a game rushing coming in. Only 56 yards rushing so far today in this football game. First down and 10 for Arkansas. They haven't scored since their opening drive of the ball game. Jones throws it away short of his receiver. It was intended for Wilson, who upended Mike Lehan. But he's second down and 10 for Arkansas. You see what a difficult situation it is for Arkansas and Matt Jones. They are not, Mark, a drop-back passing team. 
they are a team that must run the football to be able to throw the football because their passes come off run play action and run protections, turn back protections. And Houston Nutt says of Jones, he has to strengthen his arm, work on his arm strength and accuracy in the offseason, but that could be a problem if he's busy playing basketball, which he might do here decide after this bowl game. The pass complete in the flat of the 42-yard line to Poole, who's brought down right on the spot. Nice tackle on the play by Terrence Campbell. And now the timeout battle continues as Minnesota, Mark, calls one of their two remaining timeouts. Minnesota coming into this game with a record of 7-5. and five, Started the year very quickly, winning seven out of their first eight games, but then uh, struggling down the stretch, Bob, losing their last four. Arkansas, meanwhile, started off, they were three and three, then catapulted out to six consecutive wins before losing. I would have to say so far, it seems like both teams came ready to play today. I, I think so, and I, I think the emotional part of it probably favors Minnesota because they did lose their last four games and totally have something to prove, to prove they deserve to be in a bowl game. Arkansas, on the other hand, nine wins in the SEC, play in the SEC championship, maybe thinks they deserve a better bowl game. So I think the intangibles uh, probably fall on the side of Minnesota in this football game. When you talk about the turning point, especially for Arkansas, it was pretty, pretty dramatic. They lost one of their defensive leaders and then came back the following week, had themselves a team meeting. Certain members of that defense stood up and said, basically, let's be accountable for ourselves. Let's not have any more lies and deception amongst ourselves. And they went out the following game and really put the hurt on Mississippi, subsequently turning their season around. Third down and seven. The pass complete that time to Wilson. First down at the Minnesota 38-yard line with 21 seconds to go in the half. First down, Arkansas. And hurry things up after that 20-yard game. And Jones spikes it to stop the clock. Arkansas with no timeouts remaining. 19 seconds to go in the half. To give you an idea, Mark, Arkansas comes into this football game averaging just 19 passes a game. They're first in the SEC in rushing, 11th in the nation in rushing. Compare that to 12th in the SEC in passing and 80th in the NCAA in passing. So. Obviously, they're trying to beat Minnesota left-handed right now. On second down and 10, Jones. And picked off, Mike Lehan. Lehan brought down finally at the 38-yard line, Minnesota's fifth interception of the season. And Mike Lehan wanted to go a little bit more. The senior playing in his last game in a Minnesota uniform. What a great way, if you're Minnesota, to end this first half. It gives them so much momentum going in at halftime. You see right here, Minnesota in two deep zone coverage. Lee in the corner. The ball is really thrown right to him right here by Matt Jones. Juggles it a little bit, stays alive, and then turns into sudden change. So, Mark, great emotional lift and high right now for Minnesota going into the locker room. There's Jackson on the carry, brought down immediately. And Minnesota on four field goals by Dan Nystrom, lead 12 to seven going into the locker room. And right now, let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Coach Nett, you call the plays for Arkansas. What did you learn about the Minnesota defense in the first half you can use in the second? Well, right now, they're, they're playing awfully hard. We got to do a better job of executing. We got to make some plays and stay on our blocks. Tell us about the decision to go for it on fourth down. Well, the wind's swirling every which way, you know, and just didn't have that much confidence, just trying to get us back in the game. All right, thanks very much, Coach. Reese, back to you. All right, thank you very much. First half from Nashville. Arkansas jumped on top. They've fallen behind thanks to Dan Nystrom and those four field goals, 12-7. Glad to have you with us. Trev Alberts, Mark May here. And Gophers didn't get it in the end zone, Trev, but really the offense was pretty effective, mounting several drives. The Big Ten's great. 
Okay, they're playing very well. I mean, <laughs> Arkansas not playing very well. I just didn't think the Big Ten was going to play very well. Minnesota's playing well. What I've been impressed with is Glenn Mason, his offensive game plan for this. If Arkansas did have a weakness, their pass defense this year, they last in the SEC. Using Abdul Kalik, moving him, throwing to the tight end, the screens, then mixing in the running plays, I think Minnesota clearly has the better game plan, Mark, going in in this first half. Not only offensively, defensively, if you look at Arkansas, their number one rush, de rush offense in the SEC going against the Big Ten's probably worst rush defense the way that they played the season, particularly Trev mentioned it earlier today that their last four or five games, they were absolutely atrocious trying to stop the opponent from running the football. But Dan Nystrom, the, the kicker for Minnesota, I've got to give him his props. Four for four field goals, 70 career field goals. Big Ten's best field goal kicker through their history, the most field goals made. This year, Nate Keene won the Lou Groves Award, but this is a kicker that's right up there with the best of them. And Mike Nugent, too, some great yeah. place kicking yes. in the Big Ten this season. So as we spin this forward to the second half now, Trev, uh, what, needs, what needs to change? What does Minnesota need to do? First of all, Minnesota just keep doing what they're doing, but I think it's Arkansas who needs to change. I think if you're the right reverend, you get there in at halftime and start throwing some stuff, start throwing some chairs. I mean, this is a team that played for the SEC championship. I think also you need to challenge your offensive line. Sure, Minnesota's going to put eight and nine guys in the box. You got to challenge your offensive line and tell Fred Talley, listen, this is what we do. We run the football. We will run right at this defense. You have to remember, Minnesota in their last game against Wisconsin gave up about five million yards on the ground. Run the football. Don't change what you do. If all of a sudden they go back and become a passing team, then you're going to throw interceptions. That's not what they are. Stick to your game plan. It's not out of, out of hand yet. Well, the only correction for Glenn Mason in Minnesota, this is exactly what they have to do, continue to do what they're doing offensively. But here's the key, what they have to do. They're running the ball effectively between the 20s, but they've got to start doing better in the red areas. Instead of field goals, they have to start putting touchdowns on the board. They have to execute better in the red area. That's the only thing you should tell this team at halftime. Sometimes it comes back to bite you in these postseason games when you start kicking field goals instead of scoring touchdowns. Arkansas, I think your point's well taken. They ran it 20 times and maybe got away from their personality a little bit. We'll look ahead to the rest of the day, Capital One Bowl Week, after this. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Brought to you by Bridgestone Firestone. Proud to be a part of the Music City Bowl. Good first half in Nashville in the Gaylord Hotels, Music City Bowl. Big Ten against the SEC. The Big Ten with a five-point edge at the break. Minnesota on top of Arkansas by a count of 12-7. Glad to have you with us. Capital One Bowl Week rolling on, and it rolls on this afternoon to Seattle. Oregon taking on Wake Forest, a reunion of sorts from the 1992 Independence Bowl, but Oregon much more concerned about recent history. Ducks got off to a 6-0 start this season, careened to the finish, an abysmal failure by their defense kept them out of the Pac-10 race. They'll try to get things rectified against Wake Forest this afternoon. Steve Levy and Rod Gilmore in Seattle for the call. Thanks very much. As always here in Seattle, there's plenty of coffee and there's plenty of excitement as Wake Forest out of the ACC gets set to take on Oregon out of the Pac-10 in the second annual Seattle Bowl, the first at Seahawks Stadium. Oregon's the home team. Ontario Smith always at home when he has the football. He reached 1,000 yards this season in fewer than eight games. But a couple of questions about him. Is he coming back? And how's that need? I'd say he's probably 95 percent healthy. He's, his knee is totally sound, totally healthy. Uh, I don't think he's in great game shape because he really hasn't played in about five or six, maybe seven weeks now. But uh, he is healthy. He's taken every rep in practice, had no setbacks. I think he'll be ready to go. Rod Wake Forest comes in eighth in the country in rushing offense. They do it by committee. The Ducks, they do it with Ontario Smith. Yeah, well, if Wake Forest had Ontario Smith, they wouldn't do it by committee. And this guy is great. The problem for Oregon is that he wasn't available for most of the second half of the season. With him, 38 points a game. Without him, only 25 points a game. He's a start and stop runner, burst. He thinks he's ready for the NFL. 50-50 chance. This could be his last game. We'll see how the Wake defense will try to handle him. It is Seattle tradition, the fish toss at Pike Place Market. We'll be tossing footballs from Seattle in just a bit. For now, we toss it back to you. Keenan Howard, Reister, and those guys, they can catch those fish. You throw them their way for sure. I don't know if Levy and Gilmore were in the company-issued ties. They look, <laughs> look very similar there. Uh, two teams really don't look similar, though, Oregon and Wake Forest. Uh, Oregon's really had trouble after the defensive failures late in the season. The offense has struggled in the passing game the last couple of games. Just 27 out of 66, they've thrown five picks in these games. They might get better in this bowl game. <laughs> I mean, you're playing against a Wake Forest team that kind of limped. I'd have to say 6-6 six and 7th six and in the ACC, probably not exactly – 
what Jim Grubb wanted as the head coach there at Wake Forest. But I think the, one of the real problems they've had defensively is pass defense. 91st in the nation in pass defense. And the main problem is only 17 sacks. They haven't gotten consistent pressure. And I think that's a real key in this game. We've talked about Ontario Smith being back. Obviously, the balance that provides Oregon's offense. But Jason Fife is a very capable quarterback if he's given time. If he has a run game, play action pass, and given time, he will be able to throw the football. So I think if you're Wake Forest, you got to find a way. If it's blitzing some, get pressure on Jason Fife. Do not let him sit back there all day. Well, it helps a questionable Wake Forest defense is their offense by running the football. And they run the football the majority of the time with the option. And it's James McPherson, the quarterback, excellent ball handler. And he's got to execute well today to keep their offense on the field. Scoring points is very important, but you have to play keep away against the Oregon potent offense. Keep them off the field. Run that option up and down the line of scrimmage. Eat up the clock. They're eighth in the nation in rushing. We'll see if they can play a little keep away against the Ducks. You know, it's a Pac-10 ACC matchup. And, of course, bragging rights always on the line for the conferences. In our Bowl Challenge Cup, ESPN presenting a trophy to the conference, which does the best by winning percentage if you have at least three representatives in bowl games. And so far, the SEC and Big Ten off to a 1-0 start. And we're at halftime of an SEC Big Ten matchup right now. The ACC 1-1. Pac-10 struggling a little bit. The Pac-10 needing a win out of Oregon if they want to bounce back in this thing and some of the other conferences you see struggling just a little bit. Any conference so far that has surprised you with its performance? I'm assuming the Big Ten might have surprised you thus How far. How did you guess? It was just a little guess. Well, it is the Big Ten, and frankly, it's always that perception versus reality, and let's let's face it. I mean, I've been one who's thought that maybe the Big Ten really wasn't that strong this season, top to bottom. I know they have two teams in BCS games. We'll see how those two teams play later on in the season, but I think, you know, obviously, Wisconsin playing very well against Colorado. That meant a lot to me, watching Wisconsin be able to stop the vaunted run game of Colorado, and then in this game. Minnesota, who I thought was very average and not a very good football team going into this game, playing very well. I think the Big Ten has impressed me a lot. I was surprised by the Big East and West Virginia's loss in that game to Virginia yeah. and the way that Virginia really manhandled them coming from the ACC playing against the Big East team, but here's the key for the Big East. They have two games left, Virginia Tech Air Force and, of course, Miami in the national championship game. And I think the Big East will still end up 4-1, and one, but I like the way that they played in the bowl season thus far. Yeah. Isn't the good thing about you get to see them on the field playing yeah. each other? Yes. Forget about conference that perception reality. Yeah. Let them play. Figure out who's the best. You know, we talk all year long about which conference is the best, and this is a way to measure it. One yeah. way is the non-conference games before the bulk of the conference schedule starts during the regular season. The other way, Bowl season. But, you know, you approach bowl games differently for different schools. Sometimes it can be a false measure, but still well, get no the bragging fall, rights no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready after liking the Big Ten so much? Are you going to pick Ohio State to win the national championship now? Uh, no. <laughs> Not even after that first half by Minnesota? Uh, no. <laughs> Smart man. Final play of the game. Randall stops, throws it as far as he can. Count! Count! Touchdown! Last play of the game, I don't believe it! Oh my goodness. Larry Johnson closing in on the magical number. Gets the toss. Johnson, here he goes! This is 2,000 plus for Larry Johnson! Touchdown Penn State! And he does it with style! To vote, log on to ESPN.com. Keyword Pontiac. There's no I in team. There's no I in Nystrom, but Nystrom's still been a one-man team. Dan Nystrom has Minnesota on top of Arkansas 12-7 with four field goals. Not likely to see quite as many field goals tomorrow when we kick off five bowl games here on the ESPN family of networks with the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. High-flying Boise State on its home turf against Iowa State. Iowa State, a team that started 6-1 and one, but finished the season one in five down the stretch. They are one in five all time in bowl games, and they are one in five on the road this season. Detect the trend coming here? <laughs> the trend is one in five, and I think the reason why that one in five happened is a very simple reason. I think it's the reason why everything happened to this football team is that they all of a sudden couldn't run the ball, only about 90 yards in the ground. And here's a quarterback, Seneca Wallace. Obviously, we know about him. You're going to see him do great things here. Has a nice arm, but the last three games, He's had eight interceptions and five fumbles. The reason why Iowa State has struggled down the stretch is because they haven't been able to run the football, which leads to turnovers. Then defensively, all of a sudden, you find your defense being on the field because of those interceptions and fumbles, and all of a sudden, down the stretch, they couldn't stop the run. 180 yards a game. I think that's the bottom line in this game, Mark. Can that defense stop that vaunted running game of Boise State? I don't think they can, and there's a lot of reasons why, and I'm going to explain some of those, but I think what's key here is you're talking about the number one 
total offense in the nation, the number one scoring offense in the nation. That's Boise State, 47 points a game. And they do it with their quarterback, Ryan Didwitty. Very smart with the football, protects it very well. Goes over the middle to Billy Wingfield, and you got to love the blue turf. Here's another long pass down the field to play. I love the blue turf. Ryan Didwitty again in the end zone. My little buddy, Tim Gilligan, yes! Ryan did it again to Lou Fanucci for the touchdown pass. Is that the way the that he spreads Gilligan the ball around, 19 season? touchdown passes, only three interceptions. And we still haven't even talked about Brock Forsey led the nations in total yeah. touchdowns with 29. So this is a very, very potent offense we're going to see from Boise State. Yeah. There is a group that doesn't like the blue turf. Apparently some of nature's foul having some problems with the Apparently blue they turf. think it's a lake and these ducks are expiring on the field. They're burning in. It's not a what's positive happening. thing, but it does happen. <laughs> we're going to move across the state of it's Tennessee also tomorrow from Nashville, the game we're enjoying right now right now out to Memphis for the Acts of Liberty Bowl. And this game promises to be a smash mouth, hard hitting affair between Colorado State and TCU. And the Rams, well, they play a tough schedule every year. They play the non-conference foes. They jump up and beat the big boys. And they do it by matching them on their own terms from physical football. And they do it by running the ball with Cecil Sapp. Very big and physical. 6'2", 225 pounds, 1,495 yards rushing. But I like the way he pounds the ball in between the tackles. You will not arm tackle Cecil Sapp. Look at the legs. Chug a lug, chug a lug, chug a lug. Keep moving, keep moving. Uh -huh. Goes in for the score. Carries three, four, five defenders in there. And the quarterback, Bradley Van Pelt. Linebacker mentality here on the option. You're not going to bring him down. Very very good throwing the football, but I like it even better when he runs the football. They're just throwing it in the defender's face, sticking it to him. 15 oh, no, no, no. Here he is in the pocket, throwing the ball into the score to his tight end. I love the way he operates this offense. A very physical quarterback. He's got that mentality of an offensive lineman. He's going to take it to the defenders. Good offense. Defensively, though, the last game against UNLV just melted down. UNLV had like 390 yards rushing against that defense. I you talk about defense, TCU. You talked about a snot knocker game, and this is what I love about snot bubble, bubble, snot well, bubble, bubble snocker. Look at that guard. Donald, number 44 linebacker. He's a stud. And then old Jeff Smitherman, Jared Smitherman. Smitherman. Well, Smitherman. Come on, whatever. I, just, I got snot all over me from that snot knocker comment. <laughs> yeah, so this ball. is a great defense. 62 yards a game in terms of stopping the run. Can Cecil Sapp run the football? That's the whole question. I don't think he can. That's why TCU wins the game. All right, we will see tomorrow five games on New Year's Eve. If you can ring in the new year with us, you don't even need those people dropping the ball at Times Square. Trev might kiss Mark. No. Yes, I am. Matt Somebody. Jones has the hogs in it. They're down five to break. Back on the halftime report, Notre Dame linebacker Chad DeBolt was arrested for allegedly causing a disturbance at a Jacksonville nightclub late Friday night. Now, at issue, not so much the arrest itself, but what happened to DeBolt after the arrest. His booking photo showed him bruised, battered, and bloody, and at least one witness says he was not in that condition when the arrest took place. Ty Willingham has refused comment on the situation. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Department says it is investigating internally. Some NFL coaching changes. Three guys are out. As expected, Dave Campo, he's probably the last guy to find out officially, but he wasn't living under a rock. He knew he was out of there soon. Tom Coughlin out in Jacksonville as well, along with Dick LeBeau. Much more on that coming up at Sports Center. 6 o'clock Eastern time over on ESPN2. Rich Brooks has the job at Kentucky. There are no more 1A vacancies available, guys. Uh, who did the best job? Mark, we'll start with you. Who did the best job in filling the... Uh filling the open coaching position. You don't know? None of these guys, none of these names really excite me. None of them are going to make me run out and sign a national letter of intent if I was a high school senior at this point. But Texas A&M probably did the best job with Dennis Franchoni, stealing him from Alabama. He brought most of his staff with him to Texas A&M. He'll do a great job there. If it's the only scholarship offer I get, I'll sign it. I'll, I'll go ahead and sign that. We'll I, sign I like Washington State. I like the continuity that was established with Bill Doba, the former defensive coordinator. That's right, Bill Doba, Doba. Yes. now the head coach. you got to remember, Washington State had a nice offense this year, but defensively they made a lot of strides. Guys like Marcus Trufant at corner, 52 sacks, very good defense. I think Washington State's going to be a good football team. Right. Ryan Long played pretty well for Bill Doe. Well, yeah, unbelievable well, player. Yeah, well, he the trophy. Yes, he yeah. did. But here's the key. Next yeah, year, trophy. Yeah, but, yeah, trophy. Yeah, that's it? right, the trophy. But I here's the key. Like Next year, Washington State will have a bye. He'll still mention Bill Doba's name. Well, of he course. He just likes to I say like it. two syllables. Doba. Doba. you got to punch the Easy butt. to say. <laughs> Doba. <laughs> Fran Choney. We've got a second Doba. half of football coming from the Music City Bowl. Gaylord Hotel is your sponsor. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Brought to you by 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. It's free for you and cheap for them.
Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Back here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Coliseum on the banks of the Cumberland River, Minnesota, leading Arkansas in the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl to score at halftime 12 to 7. Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Holly Rowe down in the field. Season's greetings, folks, from uh, all of us here, which includes a very talented crew behind the scenes that you rarely get a chance to see to all of you at home. Bob, we saw Minnesota play back on November the 23rd, the last time they played at Wisconsin, a loss. You look at the difference between them them and now it's a world of difference. Glenn Mason has to be thinking, boy, if I had had this kind of healthy quarterback then then, what would have been? I, I think that's right, Mark, and a great job coaching by Glenn Mason. The diversity in their offense, you look right there, pass distribution, taking advantage of the wide receiver, the running back, and the tight end. Minnesota with 215 yards offense in the first half, only punted the ball one time. Unfortunately for Minnesota, four field goals and no touchdowns. Bob, that's only half the story. So much criticism thrown the way of the defensive troops for Minnesota. It's been a different group today. Well, Minnesota's played good, solid defense under the new coordinator, Greg Hudson, but Arkansas has to get back to what they do best, and that's line up, run the football to the right side of the field behind the big offensive tackle. They're throwing the football, and to me, Matt Jones looks uncomfortable in the pocket, particularly on drop back passing. So one half of football to go in this season. If you're Arkansas, get back and run that football and test the rush defense of Minnesota. And there's a look at the new defensive coordinator taking over from Mo Ankeny. That's Greg Hudson, who, as Holly Rowe reported earlier, the minute he was told he was the new defensive coordinator, summoned his troops and had meetings for three consecutive days picking the minds of the various players on defense. Mark, and we mentioned, we mentioned Mo Ankeny. Glenn Mason made the decision to make this switch before the season right. even started. In fairness to him. Yeah. In fairness to Mo, and Mo is now assistant head coach, will do a lot more of the administrative duties when Glenn Mason's away from campus. So it's a win-win situation for both coaches. Arkansas to kick off here to begin the third period of play in the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. Jermaine Mays got an alley. Mays, the special teams demon, downed at midfield at the 50-yard line and a great way to start the second half for Minnesota. Jermaine Mays, we know him more for punt block. They fake the reverse right here. It freezes Arkansas just a little bit. Not a great effort right there by number 42 from Arkansas. But you see Jermaine Mays almost break that one right there to the house. And Minnesota ends the first half on a positive with the interception, comes out of the locker room, and now has the big play on special teams, Mark. First down and 10 from their own 49-yard line. Two tights, two wides, and a single back. Shot up to a Kalik, going to throw it here on first down. Looking for Burns, and it's incomplete at the goal line. It was working on Eddie Jackson. Let's go downstairs to Holly. With Glenn Mason at halftime, he said he's thrilled with the changes on his defense. He said they're just playing harder like they thought he could. But he says he needs to get them back on track as far as forcing um, Arkansas into the passing game. He says they look uncomfortable doing it, and he wants them to really pressure them to go to that. He also says as good as his kicker is, they have to do a better job and get in the end zone. Yeah, good point. Uh despite the fact that they've moved the ball well, 216 total yards of offense, only 12 points to show for it. Stalling in the red zone. Here's Jackson. Jackson running hard over the right side, brought down to the 46-yard line by Ken Hamlin, the strong safety once again. You see why Ken Hamlin leads this football team on tackles. Good play call. Terry Jackson on the toss, sweep, and right here you're going to see Ken Hamlin Mark, that is a great tackle. Lifted Terry Jackson up off the ground right there. You see the strength of that free safety. Third down and five. Jackson still the lone back. Minnesota had success on third down in the first half. Let's see what they do here. Abdul Khalid still alive and finds Jackson. Jackson brought down short of the first down at about the 44-yard line. They had to get to the 41, but Assad Abdul Khalik made something out of nothing. Great effort by a healthy 
Assad Abdul Khalid. They wanted to go back to the slant against bump and run. Tony Bua almost has the sack. Assad, good awareness, good presence, gets the ball to Terry Jackson. Second punt of the afternoon right here for Minnesota, Mark. Yeah, Preston Greening with it just a second attempt. And uh, on fourth and three, back deep, it's to Corey Birmingham with his heels firmly planted on his own 10-yard line. Catch it on the fly to 15. Birmingham out to the 25-yard line. A 10-yard return after that 29-yard punt. The story of the first half for Minnesota. Nystrom's scoring on field goals. Four of them, which breaks a Big Ten record in points and field goals. And the rush defense for the Gophers has been simply golden. Jones being stopped up along with Brett Talley. Darius Howard and Cedric Cobbs. And you heard the comments from Holly Rowe on the sidelines saying that Glenn Mace had wanted Arkansas to throw more because they look uncomfortable doing it. First and 10 from the 25. I'm not sure he's going to get his wishes right now, Mark. I think Arkansas is going to come out here in the second half and put the hammer down. Pass complete on the out. That's Richard Smith. He's working on Mike Lehan. Close to the first down, Mark. Houston Nutt continues on first and ten to take advantage of the soft coverage. Throw it out there to Richard Smith. But, Mark, I think the rejuvenated Minnesota defense has as much to do with the youth of this team. Only one senior starting on defense. It's a long season, particularly in the Big Ten with those big physical teams. Minnesota had a chance to get healthy and get rejuvenated because those young players got worn down. First and ten, this is Tally, who took a knock at the 36-yard line from Eli Ward. You talked about the youth of Minnesota. You take a look at their starters by class, just one senior, five juniors, and five sophomores and freshmen combined. So that bodes well for next season in Glenn Mason's troops. Well, they started out seven and one. And I think the bottom line, they got beaten down, and they had to play some excellent football teams late in the season. Mark, this formation right here for Arkansas splitbacks, they love to run the option game out of this. There's the decide option, and uh, Jones pitches it to number 33, Mark Pierce, the bruising fullback, six foot, 240 pounds, a sophomore. And Arkansas with another first down. Another form of the modern age triple option. He's reading the defensive end, he keeps the ball, and now he's gonna option the next guy. So it's a modern day triple option. They pitch the ball to the fullback, number 33, Mark Pierce. I believe his first carry of the afternoon. Mark, that's the old wishbone. Just a different way of doing it. It's old as new. New is old. First down and 10 for Arkansas. Jones on the quick drop. Complete. That was a long out to Richard Smith, who was working on the other cornerback, Yuki Dozier. Oh, it was dangerous. I saw you wince there. I'll tell you what, I winced. <laughs> One of two things are going to happen. Arkansas needs to go out and up because Yuki Dozier is getting a little bit anxious now when he's playing off coverage. Almost came and picked that if you'd have played the ball, but you'd love to come back the next opportunity on a first and 10 and go out and up on Yuki Dozier. Watch that, second down and five here. The back's out of the eye, Pierce and Talley. There's the out and up you called for, Bob, but he overthrows George Wilson. Right on cue. The safety's cheating up a little bit, including Dozier on that play. The corner's cheating up. The difference, Mark, this time, as you see right here at the bottom, Minnesota's in bump and run. So it's not quite as good a play as if it would have been off man. And I'm a little bit surprised that Arkansas changed the formation and threw it to number 88, George Wilson. I'd have come back to Richard Smith, the flanker, and created the same formation as before. Well, the four of eight on third downs today. They're looking at third and five here. Play fake by Jones. Lehan comes up with a pick. Mike Lehan, the senior, makes another big play for the Gophers, number 39, who in his last two years in the maroon uniform has come up with so many big plays for that team.
And there's a flag down at the 46, but it looks like this play will stand. Mike Lehan made the Locked pick. in the back against Minnesota on the return. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Mark the play action again on third and five. This time Minnesota in man-to-man -man coverage. Michael Lehman on the tip drill again. But I want you to watch right here. The receiver, number 19, Carlos Ausley, he stops. He stops on the field, and Michael Lehman almost takes that thing to the house. But two things. I'm a little bit surprised going back that on second and five, Arkansas threw the football. Now they come back on third and five, but the receiver stopped after sudden change. Looked like he jammed his finger, was holding and wincing in pain, but like you said, you, you keep playing through. This is Thomas Tepay playing through right down the gut near the first down at the 45-yard line. Two picks today for Mike Lehan. And Arkansas coming in, Mark, as you mentioned earlier, fourth in the nation in turnover margin. Today, minus two. Bob, in Minnesota's defense only had four interceptions on the season coming in. Got a pair of them now. First down and ten. Thomas to pay. Boy, he can break some tackles. Can he down to the 39-yard line? Tony Bua making the stop. Thomas to pay, as I said earlier, started off with a lot of credentials coming out of high school. Suffered some injuries, some foot injuries in particular, earlier in his career. Mark, it's early in the third quarter. It's only a 12-7 deficit for the Razorbacks, but you feel they're hanging by a thread right now. Right. Momentum totally on the side of Minnesota. Second down and four. Tony Poole has made a lot of tackles on defense for Arkansas. Here's the play fake. Tepay makes the catch. The bounds of the 33 for more on Bula. Here's Holly downstairs. Guys, Tony Bula during the last series break was behind here, this little cabinet on the sideline and trainer standing around him with towels. It's a modesty issue. He had to take his pants off and take off this wrap and tape that were tightly wound around his groin area. It was bothering him. He didn't have mobility. And so he had to do a quick change here on the sideline. Not easy to do in front of all these Arkansas fans. Hey, I guess, uh, Holly, improv improvisation is the name of the game. You gotta make what uh, you have with, you know? They do. First down and 10. On the waggle, Abdul Khalid brought down back of the 40. That play was going nowhere in a hurry. Elliot Harris made the stop for Arkansas. It'll be second down and long. They lost about eight. There's a trade-off with everything. Minnesota's done an excellent job on first and ten of keeping Arkansas off balance. But that time, Dave Womack won the battle on first and ten, hitting them with a pressure stunt on first and ten against the play action. Second down and 17 from the 40. Patterson in motion. Pass complete. Back to the original line of scrimmage. It's Antoine Burns. It'll be third down and about 10 to go. Lawrence Richardson making the stop for Arkansas. But Abdul Khalid, at one point this year during the losing streak, there were some whispers, a little grumbling among the team. Glenn Mason held a team meeting and said, hey, listen, fellas. Anyone who believes that Assad should not be the starting quarterback, stand up and be accounted for. Nobody stood up, and they went on and finished the season, played a little bit better after that point, although they did not win, but he's healthy, and he's a much different quarterback today. Third down and 10. He has plenty of time. Incomplete at the two-yard line for Ellerson. Been hung up there a long time. And it's fourth down and long. Ahmad Carroll making the defense on the play. You're going to see Ellerson right here. Great job of adjusting in the air, but he's out of bounds. That was a tremendous effort right there by Ellerson. Number 83. Boy, twisted his body around to make the catch. And again, Mark, the mobility of Assad Abdul Khalid allowing the receiver to come semi open. A one of one on fourth down today. They go for it here. Quick count. In the end zone, and 
Good defense that time by Ahmad Carroll. They went back to the same guy, Ellison. And Arkansas takes over on down. That's textbook coverage right there by Ahmad Carroll. You can see why Arkansas coaches love this corner, Mark. He is competitive now. They call him Batman because when he was a kid playing Pop Warner football, playing defense, he would leap over the centers and tackle the quarterbacks on the flies and also make tackles on the running backs in the same manner. Well, the Batman was the right man on this play. We'll be right back. Minnesota leading 12 to 7 in this, the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Arkansas offensively looked really good on its opening drive of the ball game, moving it down the field and scoring. But since that time, the last six drives have not been very productive. First and ten. Now he made one guy miss and is brought down to the 35 by Ben West. Mark, you talk about Arkansas. That's now 22 runs to 20 passes. You see Fred Talley in the free safety. Eli Ward up and misses the tackle, but I go back to the play selection. 22 rushes, 20 passes. Arkansas comes in only averaging 19 passes a game. Line up and test this Minnesota defense against the run. Well, here they go with the pass. It's Jones on a play fake. Nobody open downfield. And it's incomplete, intended for George Wilson, who was working on Yuki Dozier. Minnesota secondary doing a good job there. Well, no question, but once again, I think Arkansas playing into Minnesota's hands. Minnesota is a young, undersized defense. Arkansas hasn't pounded them. Minnesota is as fresh right now up front in the front seven as they've been the whole football game. Seen a lot of tally, but not that much Howard or Cedric Cobbs even. And third and eight. The SEC's top rushing attack stymied here in this bowl game as Arkansas calls its first time out of the second half. We'll take one with them. We'll be right back. Well, coaching very much a family affair for Houston Nutt. His brother uh, Dickey is a head basketball coach at Arkansas State. Uh, Dennis, head basketball coach at Southwest Texas State. His brother Danny, the running back coach at Arkansas, so uh, keep it in the family box. And we had a chance to see Houston's mom and dad yesterday. Great people. Sunday morning. Third down and eight for his offense. Jones in the flat. And Pierce is tackled immediately upon making the catch by Dave Wojciechowski. And it's fourth down. They'll have to punt. Mark Jones, and Matt Jones in the drop back game once again, down to just throwing the football on third and ten out in the flat to Tony Pierce. They go three and out. But Mark, the point is, it's a 12-7 game. They are totally in sync right now to line up and run the football. If at some point Minnesota gets another score, then they're going to have to throw the football. Jermaine Mays was making an effort to make the block. Here's Upchurch on the return, brought down immediately at the 30-yard line after that 39-yard punt. You mentioned Matt Jones. I can understand you saying my name, Bob. Matt Jones is the only Jones that passes, okay? <laughs> we'll be back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl, brought to you by the Nashville Conventions and Visitors Bureau. For detailed information on escaping to Nashville, call 800-657-6910. And by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. A look at beautiful downtown Nashville, folks. Uh, you should hear Bob Davies sing Luke and Bob, Texas, walking down the street last night. Just vibing to all that country western music. You locked back into your college station mode a little bit. You give people the wrong effect. <laughs> Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Holly Rowe down in the field. 12-7 Minnesota with the lead. Here's Upchurch on the reverse. Nice nine-yard gain out to the 39-yard line. Capital One Bowl week continues. 5.30 Eastern when Calvin Pace and the Demon Deacons defense go against Ontario Smith. 
and the Oregon Ducks since the second annual Seattle Bowl following our game. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. You would think that Smith would have to have a good game for Oregon to have a shot there. And always enough time to get a little bike work in, huh? Back to the action. Jackson. Close to the first down, upended near the 40 yard line. The best thing today, I think, about Minnesota's offense, besides the diversity in the play calling, Mark, zero turnovers. And Arkansas, as we mentioned, fourth in the country in turnover margin. A team that had 19 interceptions and 17 fumble recoveries coming in. Third down and one. Abdul Khalid keeps it himself and gets the first down. Keeping those legs churning out to the 42-yard line with about five and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Minnesota leads the battle of total yardage, 258 yards to 190. And that guy right there has been very poised today. Hasn't turned it over. Made some plays on third down especially. And poised against a multiple, multiple defense. Arkansas in and out of a 3-3 defense and a 4-2 defense. Give you about every look in football, as you can see right here on the screen. They got the whole Razorback Nation up there at the line of scrimmage. First down and 10. And the long out, it's complete at the 43-yard line to Antoine Burns. And Asad Abdul Khalik is feeling it. He's telling the coach, hey, you got to milk me. The first thing I want you to notice, Minnesota in an unbalanced line, maximum protection, both backs in, just isolate the receiver, Antoine Burns, on Lawrence Richardson, one-on-one, -on -one and a great comeback route. But, Mark, it started with the protection. Keep everybody in and just see how good that DB is, one-on-one -on -one out there with all that ground. There's the toss to Jackson. Couldn't quite get to the edge, brought down at the 41-yard line by, once again, Ken Hamlin. That's a doing well for a guy that wasn't even supposed to play because of the flu. Inter interesting different preparation. Arkansas, coming out of the Southeast Conference Championship, did not scrimmage. No time did they tackle full speed, and you see Bo, Bo, Bo Mosley right here, number 25, miss the tackle. And Ken Hamlin comes up and really doesn't wrap his arms. So Mark, Minnesota, scrimmage. The day before they let the players leave, full speed tackle, Arkansas didn't tackle. And I think you see a little bit of that right here now in this game. I want to get back to that in just a bit. Here's the double reverse. Upchurch got a block and is brought down at the 34-yard line, about two yards short of the first down. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, as we told you earlier, Minnesota has 10 players that have changed positions for this game. Danny Upchurch is one of them. He's been a defensive back all year. He has participated on special teams, but today is his first game as an offensive weapon. He's doing a pretty good job. The long completion on the fake and his running game has shown us a little something. Yeah, that's right, Holly. Here he is getting a block from Abdul Khalik. And it's third down, about one to go. Actually, they got the first down. Thomas to bear the long back. A three receiver formation for Minnesota. Patterson in motion. And Jared Ellison was the intended receiver. But it was a little bump and grind dance with Ahmad Carroll down the sidelines, and there's a flag. Well, I think Ahmad Carroll grabbed him early in the round, Mark. It was holding just as that play materialized. I think you're going to get a chance to see the one late here in the route as well. Right there with the right hand on the shoulder pad. But he also held him initially coming off the line of scrimmage. We saw Carroll get whistled for a flag earlier, bumping the intended receiver before the ball was even snapped. A little bit overzealous. It's first down and 10 to nose the ball now at the 23-yard line. Arkansas, though, still down just five points. A straight man coverage up here at the top again, Mark. August in motion to give us to Thomas to pay down to the 19 yard line. We're here in Nashville, Tennessee, the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl with the battle between two conferences uh, with great football history Arkansas and Minnesota. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davy and Holly Rowe. Both teams. Uh, 
Started the season uh, in different fashions. Arkansas three and three, finishing six and one. Minnesota starting fast, winning seven of eight, then losing the last four. August in motion. Wide open. Touchdown, Ben Utah. Utec with his sixth touchdown catch this year. Can't say enough about the play calling, Mark, of Tony Peterson, the offensive coordinator, spreading the football around, keeping Arkansas completely off balance. And you know what? Arkansas didn't run the football when it was 12-7. I'm not sure they'd be patient enough to run it now. They're looking at a different set of circumstances, the extra point. From Nystrom is good. Asad Abdul Kalik with his 19th touchdown pass this season. As for the guy at the other end of it, the name is Utec. You got it. We'll be right back. Arkansas against Minnesota in the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Ben Utec with the touchdown reception a few moments ago before the break. And it's 19 to 7 for Minnesota. Saad Abdul Kalik leading his team down the field, and what a different quarterback he is when he is healthy. A big year for him. Got a lot on his mind. Expecting the birth of his first child coming up in a couple of months. Got married a little over a year ago, and now leading his team, perhaps, in victory in the bowl. Minnesota with 19 consecutive points after Arkansas scored on its first possession of the ball game. Here's Poole, and he is brought down immediately. Go back to the touchdown. Arkansas is going to bust right here. You're going to see Scooter Boggus across in motion, and then Husak, the tight end, right up the seam. Arkansas is going to bump out in man coverage, but nobody's going to cover the tight end. And Ben Utek, the tight end, gets a free one right here. I think it goes back, Mark, to the diversity of formations that Minnesota is using. That's the first time we've seen Ben Utex release out of that formation this afternoon with both tight ends over on the same side. Jones looking to pass. Under duress. And what a catch and a subsequent fumble. It's ruled incomplete. It's ruled incomplete at the 32-yard line intended for George Wilson. Matt Jones going to his left, makes a remarkable throw back across the middle. And George Wilson's not able to come up with a hit with the catch, but you see Matt Jones take a pretty good lick here from the backside by number 52, Kyle McKenzie. Second down and 10 now. Once again, this option formation. Low snap, Jones keeps it on the option. And it's brought down at the 24-yard line. Good open field tackle by Terrence Campbell. Now, Bob, you talked about it earlier. Arkansas did not scrimmage, did not get a good amount of tackling in. As for Minnesota, they did. Which approach do you prefer, if any? What do I you like, do with the I team like when you Minnesota's go to a right now because they're up 19 <laughs> I think that's the toughest call to make, and these coaches both know their football teams better than I do. Arkansas, after playing in the SEC championship, used to not felt like felt like they were out of gas, Mark. Yeah. And he needed to rest his team. They played 13 games. This is number 14. And here's Tally. Boy, he can really scoot between the tackles, getting out to the 34-yard line. First down. I like the play call. Third down and five. They're gonna come back and just run the shotgun split back zone. And you see Fred Telly almost takes this thing to the house, Mark. Good double team. They come off and combo off on the linebacker. And Fred Talley almost cut back on Eli Ward. Another low snap. Talley gets it again, but nowhere to go. Brought down for a loss at the 25 by Anthony Montgomery. Both Capital One Bowl Week continuing New Year's Eve. Two games on ESPN2 at 3.30 Eastern. Fresno State taking on Georgia Tech at 3.30 Eastern time. Then the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl. Air Force taking on number 19, Virginia Tech. That first one, the Silicon Valley Football Classic. 
Boy, Georgia Tech uh, kind of recovered after losing Tony Hollings earlier in the year. One of the great running backs in the country. At least showed a lot of promise. Second down and 18. Jones fires incomplete, intended for Wilson. Arkansas with just a touch of momentum after Fred Talley's third down conversion on third and five, but they come back and the bad exchange on the shotgun snap gets them into second and 18 mark, and now it's third and 18. Well, the goal for Arkansas coming in. You know, Houston not told this team, very few teams can say they won 10 games in a season and went to a bowl and won. We want to start a tradition of winning bowl games in Arkansas. But a daunting task ahead, down right now, and Jones gets it off just in time. Incomplete. And no flag on the play. Intended for Hamilton. Yuki Dozier on the coverage for Minnesota. And Matt Jones... Very fortunate, Mark, that he got that football off because Minnesota, as you'll see here on this replay from the end zone, was climbing on his back. You're going to see right here, number 51, Daryl Reed almost had himself a sack right there. Unfielded at the 34-yard line. And brought down immediately after that 41-yard punt. Uh, Capital One Bowl, we continue New Year's Eve, a triple dip, the crucial.com. Humanitarian Bowl, Boise State, Iowa State, the Accident Liberty Bowl, Colorado State and TCU, and the Chick-fil-A Beach Bowl, Tennessee, taking on number 18, Maryland. And uh, there were some issues about whether Casey Clossum would declare and come out, but I think those have been put to rest now, at least for now. Mark, you said something earlier. Casey Clossum had some comments about his surrounding cast. His receivers in particular that uh, didn't really play well or haven't been playing well. Here's Jackson on the toss. Jackson pushed out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Let's revisit one of the things that we started off talking about at the top of the show. That was number 23, Terry Jackson. We were told that he wasn't going to play because of a stomach flu or a flu-like type virus. But today, he's carried the ball pretty well. Back-to-back -back Big Ten games against Northwestern and Michigan State. 238 yards and then 239 yards. He tailed off at the end of the season because, once again, a young player late in the year that's worn down. This is Minnesota's 13th game of the season. On second and 11, Abdul Khalid to UTEP. That's the hookup. Down to the 41-yard line. It'll be third down and about two to go. That might be the last play of the third quarter. A third quarter in which number 82 and number 8 hooked up for a touchdown to give Minnesota a 19-7 lead in this, the fourth quarter coming up from Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. We are back in Nashville for the start of the fourth quarter. Minnesota leading 19-7. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Holly Rowe. Saw the dual Palouk on the play fake. UTEP! And he couldn't stay on his feet. It would have been six. Falls down at the 21-yard line, but a first down. He beat Eddie Jackson on the coverage. Once again, a great play call on the power pass. You're going to see UTEP with a great move right here. Hits it back to the inside. And if he doesn't stumble, he's going to score. Eddie Jackson, the corner, comes back and makes a play on the ball instead of trying to tackle Ben Utak. But a great play call again on third and four, Mark. A little movement up front on the offensive line by Carter. And this will go against Minnesota. The first down and 15. Prior to the snap, false start by the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. A couple of freshmen starting on that offensive line for Minnesota. Jeremiah Carter, not one of them. He's a senior. Playing his last game in a gopher uniform. Those of the ball now back at the 27.
Jackson stopped up at the line of scrimmage by Clark Moore. Let's take a look at the ESPN game track. And been a big day for the senior Mike Lehan, the DB, with a couple of picks. Great concentration on that one. And another tip drill demonstration on the second one. And then Ben Utet with a touchdown catch in the third quarter to make the score 19-7. to That's where we stand right now. Thomas Tepay now in a tailback. Saad Abdul Khalid, 16 of 28 passing for 205 yards overall. Throws it up, and it's caught inbound by Antoine Burns. He went up over Lawrence Richardson. And it's a first down for Minnesota, first and goal. Mark, there's an awful lot of contact right here. You're going to see Antoine Burns. He came across in motion. They sent him up the field. Wow. I'll tell you, no question he went up and just high-pointed that football and went over the top of Lawrence Richardson. They were jostling back and forth, but Antoine Burns just went up and showed that vertical leap and made a play on the ball. Great play. August in motion. It's Thomas Tepay. Tackled at the five. Mark Moore made the stop. Let's go back and look at this. If he is in bounds, I think that right foot is clearly in bounds. No excellent doubt. call, excellent body control by Antoine Burns, number 18. Now Burns at 6'2, working on the shorter Richardson at 5'10. That was one of the concerns for the Arkansas defensive coaches. The discrepancy in height, second down and goal. To pay and Jackson out of the eye. Into the boundary on the option. Abdul Khalik brought down from behind at the two by Dixon and Bua. It'll be third down and goal. Excellent effort from the backside by Arian Dixon at number 92. But again, you see the diversity of Minnesota's offense. Imperative right here, Mark, that Arkansas holds them to a field goal on this big third down and two, keeping it really a two-touchdown game if they can do that. From the two, third and goal. Tepay and Jackson lining up out of the eye. Patterson flanked to the left, now in motion. Abdul Khalid, flag down, he got into the end zone. Touchdown. Mark, I think we're gonna get a hold or a shot block on Minnesota right here. Hold on just a minute. There's a flag. Well, you're right, Bob. It's against the Gopher. So they'll bring it back. It'll be third and goal again. First big mistake today by Minnesota, Mark. They have played virtually a flawless football game. And look at that, Bob. They move it all the way back to the 10-yard line. Third and goal, pardon me, from the 12. Changes the play call, you would think, a little bit. Patterson split to the top of your screen. That's out of the eye again. To the end zone. Incomplete. Patterson couldn't hang on to it. Maude Carroll was defending on the play. It'll be fourth and goal, and in comes the field goal. Peterson. Another excellent play call. Minnesota keeps everybody in. Look at the maximum protection. Both backs, one receiver route out here. Tony Patterson just unable to hang on to that football in the end zone. Mark, we go back to the penalty right here. You're going to watch the center right here as we watch this play materialize. He's going to grab the right leg and tackle the nose guard right there. Unfortunate because that nose guard wasn't going to make the play anyhow on Assad Abdul Khalik. That was a tackle. Here's Nystrom with his fifth field goal of the day. This one coming from 29 yards out. That ties a school record with five field goals in the game, and the Golden Gophers tack three more on the board. They lead 22-7 when we come back. Number 22, Minnesota. Check that. Minnesota leading 22-7. 11.53 to go in the fourth quarter. Boy, Greening having a good day, as is the place kicker, Dan Nystrom. 
with five field goals today, a school and bowl record. Carroll from the 10. And the kicker making the tackle at the 37-yard line. The Minnesota Golden Gophers, boy, what a year. They started off on fire, won seven out of eight, and then, boy, the market kind of fell out on them. The bottom fell out. Losses against some pretty good teams, though. And ending up at 7-5 and five and a loss on the 23rd at Wisconsin. They took a lot of heat for the quality of wins and the quality of their opponents early, but a win today against Arkansas would validate their record. Ryan Sorahan in a quarterback now for Arkansas. Fires a strike on first and 10 to the 42 to Wilson. Mark, we go back to Minnesota. Minnesota has only beaten one bowl team this year, and that was Toledo, who got drilled by Boston College. So there is some merit that early in the year for the people that said Minnesota played a weak schedule. That was true. But as what we know, everybody remembers this last football game. If you come in here today and beat Arkansas, a team that won the West Division of the SEC, you put a statement on your seat. Oh, no doubt. Shorehand downfield intended for Smith incomplete. Lehan there to break it up. Lehan has been ubiquitous for Minnesota. He's been all over the field, number 39, with two interceptions today already. And Ryan Sorahan, used to not made the decision to go with the backup quarterback, feeling he can throw the football a little better. Mark, he signed with Cal out of high school, went to San Jose State, and then eventually went to Foothill Junior College. So he's not a young player. Well, they need all the experience they can get right now, trailing 22-7. They're down in five. Minnesota playing soft zone coverage right here. Sore hand to pass. As his man complete, Hamilton got the first down on Minnesota side of midfield at the 47. Arkansas going to think about tempo a little bit. There's Jones on the sidelines. A little bit surprised that Minnesota didn't challenge the new quarterback in the game, Mark. They line up and play really just quarters coverage. Sparky Hamilton sits down in the curl. That's just a little bit too easy right now on a new quarterback in the game. Give it to Talley, who's tackled, tried to lateral it. It's loose, and Minnesota has the ball. Mark Rossley recovered it. Well, you're going to see Fred Talley trying to make a play. Here he is on the zone. He cuts back nothing there. And right here, Mark, he makes a decision. And there is a lot of open ground back here. But unfortunately, the ball gets stripped out. That's a shame. Fred Talley trying to make a play. You can't fault his effort. But when it's going bad and momentum's against you, those things never seem to work in your favor. Up to the dismay of Houston Nutt. This is Thomas Tepay. His forward progress going to be marked at about the 47-yard line. That was Arkansas's third turnover today. And here's an incredible statistic, Mark. Arkansas ran the football, I believe, 621 times this year. Did not have a fumble by a running back. Wow. And he didn't fumble the ball there, but very few turnovers this entire season for Arkansas. But as you mentioned, three today. Second down and eight for Minnesota. There's Jackson. Up down at the 43-yard line. It'll be third down and about four or five to go. Coming up next, it's the Seattle Bowl with Wake Forest taking on Oregon. Ontario Smith powering the duck attack. That's coming up next right after our game. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Third down and five for Minnesota. Mark, you can argue the case about too many bowl games. Team six and six going to bowl games. Hey, I love it. I love for coaches and players to have the chance to end on a positive. Tremendous reward for the players as well. Play take by Abdul Khalid. As all day. Into the end zone and incomplete. 
intended for Antoine Burns. And Hamlin back there defending. It's fourth down, and in comes the punting unit. Again, Minnesota keeps everybody in. They have ten, really nine protectors, one receiver route. They just launch it down to Antoine Burns, and it's not complete, but I like the play call. No chance of a negative play right there for Minnesota, and they get a chance for a big hit in the end zone. Reading with a high spiral. And it's going to be down at the two-yard line. A flag also down in the vicinity. A 42-yard punt by Preston Greening, the senior. Started the season as a preseason All-America. Minnesota special teams, Bob, has done well today between their punter, who hasn't punted all that much, and Nystrom with his five field goals. And Arkansas came into this game with the second-rated special teams football team in the country when you put all those statistics together. So, Mark, Minnesota playing the entire game today, doing a great job. Penalty is against Arkansas. Looks like they're bringing it back to punt this one again. Well, you talk about the success of Minnesota today and the relative success and strength of the Big Ten Conference. Big Ten already 1-0 on the bowl season. Mark, I think... Wisconsin uh, winning. Excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt you there. I think Arkansas had too many men on the field, which would obviously be an automatic first down for... Minnesota. Oh, they keep the ball. That was enough to get the first down. Looked like Ahmad Carroll ran off the field. Mark, and that's why it was only a five-yard penalty and not a personal foul penalty because Ahmad Carroll did make the effort to get off the field. Well, regardless, Minnesota is able to hang on the ball because of the penalty. Fitzpatrick and Tepe now lining up out of the eye. Thomas Tepe topped up behind the line of scrimmage by Caleb Miller. Miller, the strong side linebacker. Uh, it's always a battle trying to keep on weight. There is number 43. Mark, and that's not a turnover for Arkansas, but you might as well call it a turnover. Right. Major mistake right there on fourth down. Under nine minutes to go here in Nashville, Tennessee. And have we seen Abdul Khalik play a better game, more complete game than he has today? The only game I can think back was a year ago against Wisconsin in the Paul Bunyan Axe game up in the Metro Dome, Mark, where he played this kind of football game. But he's healthy. Seven and ten. Thomas Tapay also a picture of health down to the 33. Four yards short of the first down. Third down and about four with 8.23 to go. And how about Minnesota? Lose their last four games by significant scores. Come into this football game, regroup, get re-energized. Glenn Mason making some changes that sparked this football team. And uh, they go into next year with a full head of steam, Mark. Sure will. Third down and four. A lot of talented young players as well. Here's Tepay. Breaking one. Tepay. Still on his feet. Touchdown. The T train rolls into the end zone. <laughs> Tepay, what can you say, Mark? <laughs> Unbelievable effort by Tepay. Bouncing off defenders. Breaking tackles. Running right through Lawrence Richardson's arms. And then carrying another defender, that time Eddie Jackson into the end zone. That's got to make the top ten for something. <laughs> Either great run or terrible defense. One of the two, that's going to make some top ten list. 33 yards on the run. His eighth touchdown run this season. Low snap, and Brady gets it down. Thomas Tepay gives Minnesota 
A 29-7 lead here at the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. You think they love it? You got it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Presented by Gaylord Hotels. Accommodations provided by Gaylord Hotels. Created with you in mind. And in part by Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? Well, Arkansas's hopes going up the river right now. Look at the beautiful Opryland Hotel Complex where both teams stayed this week. And all aboard the T-Train if you're a Gopher fan. Thomas DeBay breaking tackles and carrying defenders, Bob, into the end zone a few moments ago. That was a great effort by Thomas DePay, and I think that sealed the fate of the Arkansas Razorbacks, Mark. Minnesota has scored on its last three possessions, a yeah. touchdown, a field goal, and another touchdown. And what's incredible, it seems like yesterday when Arkansas scored. Take the, take the first series of the game and score, haven't scored since. It's almost like that was a different team out there. A kickoff return, it's cool. Out to the 27, let's take one more look at the touchdown run. You're gonna see the young freshman center right here. Esslinger is gonna get a great block on number 34, Shane Collins. It springs Thomas DePay, and now when Thomas DePay is into the open field, you're going to see Lawrence Richardson right here with his head down and his knees on the ground, not in a football position. Thomas DePay avoids that, and then Shane Collins again comes back, misses a tackle. Thomas DePay takes it into the end zone. Great run by Thomas DePay on a simple fullback belly play. First down and 10. Backs out of the offset eye. Pierce and... Darius Howard. Play fake. Sorahan completes the pass to George Wilson. What about Esslinger's reaction to the touchdown? I'll tell you what, he's just a young puppy, too. <laughs> a true freshman playing on the offensive line. Mark, we'll do that shot a couple years from now. He'll have a big old neck, big old traps. He'll look like a different guy now. He's had a great year for a freshman now. Starting in the in the Big Ten, he's re-energized, man. These young guys got their juice back over the month of December. First game of next season is how Glenn Mason looks at this one. First and ten. Cobb in the backfield. Gets about two over the left side. There's Jones on the sidelines. Folks around the horn will not be seen today. For the programming note to pass away. Hey, what about the Big Ten? Colorado was in the Big 12 championship. Wisconsin beat them a couple of days ago. Arkansas played in the SEC championship. Minnesota perhaps on the verge of beating them today. So for you Big Ten haters out there, better recognize. Mark, I'm surprised Arkansas doesn't go hurry up, no huddle offense here. I mean, they're squandering away a bunch of time. And seven minutes to go. Sorahan going up top. Incomplete and a flag called. Wilson being covered by Lehan. Flag dropped in the vicinity of the play at the four. They call this against Minnesota. First down, Arkansas. Boy, Michael Lehan can really run. You're going to see him right here with excellent coverage. Tough call right there. I mean, I think Michael Land, tremendous coverage, leaning back into the receiver. Maybe did lean back in a little bit, but I want you to watch the big offensive tackle, the big man right here, Mark. For a 350-pound guy, amazing the flexibility he has in his body. He can really bend. Sorahan, incomplete, intended for George Wilson that time. The second time they run the post corner route to George Wilson, and he's wide open again. They completed this just a few plays ago, and here you see George Wilson open, but the quarterback, Ryan Sorhan, couldn't get him the football. Sets up a second down and 10. Wilson, the team's leading receiver coming into this game. The most consistent player, perhaps, uh, outside of Jones and the tailback. 
right down to the play. Lee had jumped the route and almost had one. I'll tell you, he breaks He's on quick. football. Woo. He can fly. Offsides. It's going to be against Minnesota. The 43, Charlton Keith, the perpetrator. What about those young guys for Glenn Mason's defense? Going to be back next year. Keith, one of them, a redshirt freshman. Making a nice impact today. Second down and five for Arkansas. Go ahead, under heat. Escapes pressure and incomplete. He was lucky to avoid the sack from Darrell Reed. Third down and five to go for Arkansas. You talk about opposites. One of the best feelings in the world is to come in and play well in a bowl game, win the bowl game. So much momentum going into recruiting in the offseason program. But if you lose the bowl game, I don't know if there's a worse feeling than that, particularly when you lost your last football game as well. So two opposite sidelines right now. But Arkansas still has a chance to finish this thing on somewhat of a positive mark. On third and five, Sorehead back to pass out the play fake. Incomplete, it'll be fourth down. They don't have much choice but to go for it here and take it once again for Wilson. The frustrating thing for Arkansas's receivers, they've been open. You look right here on the post. I mean, that's a touchdown. But Sorehan getting the pressure right there from Mike Wojciechowski just can't find a mark. And once again, Arkansas one-dimensional all year. They get themselves in a football game where really, by some ways, by their own choice, they throw the football so much. Really tough on them. Get behind is always tough, especially when you're used to running the ball. Here they are on fourth down. Sorehan will get the first down. Eluding harm's way at the 20. Got it by about a yard. Stops the clock with 6.13 to go in the game. Ar Arkansas has some great fans, though, don't they? <laughs> I mean, they love those Razorbacks. I and mean, they've got the Razorback stickers on the car, the hog hats, the whole deal. I mean, they have some loyal fans. And, and uh, Frank Royals, their athletic director, still going strong. Houston Meth told us he brings the recruits in every Sunday to visit with Frank Wells and uh, just puts on a show. He's the closer. <laughs> with a lot of ooh, big suey in the last couple of days. And looking to throw it. Pool into the end zone. And Lehan almost had his third interception. And there's a flag, meanwhile, back at the 31. We'll get a personal foul on number 35, Wojciechowski. An automatic first down. Mike Wojciechowski, the 5'8 sophomore. Personal foul against the defense. A hand to the helmet of the passer. First down. I don't know. Wow. He was just jumping up, it appeared, Bob, and came up with his hands. Yeah, and they ran that play. It was a nice play call by Arkansas, but Minnesota's in man-to-man -man coverage, so the deception really didn't matter. And Lehan goes up. Lehan's having a career day. Great way for a senior to go out with a couple of interceptions and his team on the verge of a victory. Minnesota calls timeout. We'll be back. Hey, you know what? When you got a little juice in Nashville, you just tell your band members to take these cards and bring home this programming note and hold it up in the fourth quarter. Seattle Bowl coming up next. Wake Forest taking on Oregon. First and goal for Arkansas. After that personal foul. The draw to Cobb. And Cedric Cobb stopped up just short of the 10-yard line. Cedric Cobb, number four, started the year for Arkansas as the number one guy. Had an injury problem three games into the season. Had a foot problem. Tally took over. He got hot and subsequently held on to the job. But Cedric Cobb, Bobby, remember him as a freshman, had a sensational year. Boy, it was a national name. 
early in his career at Arkansas and then has had some misfortune. Ornham into the end zone. Touchdown, Hogs. Touchdown, Arkansas. Richard Smith on the other end. Arkansas scoring its first touchdown since its first drive of the game. And that's the first touchdown pass of the season for Sorehan. Hoffman for the extra point. This drives you crazy if you're a coach right here. You see Minnesota with Richard Smith bracket. They have inside coverage and outside coverage, but he is going to beat the outside coverage to the post. And you can't draw it up better as far as a coverage, but an excellent throw and an excellent catch by Richard Smith. But Mark, they had him bracketed or double teamed on that route. But sometimes a great throw and a great catch doesn't matter what the coverage is. Well, Smith is the team's uh, best route runner. Showed it right there. And folks, tomorrow Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN. Yeah, hold it that car, boys. Uh, Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Boise State taking on Iowa State. That's at noon. And the Axel Liberty Bowl, number 21 Colorado State against TCU and the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Tennessee taking on number 18 Maryland at 7.30 Eastern Time. Well, I want to say it's been a fantastic year of college football. We've seen a lot of uh, intriguing and riveting moments throughout the course of the season, predominantly in the Big Ten, but some other conference work as well. And uh, I want to say, folks, to those of you uh, catching Bob Davies' gig here for the first year at ESPN, uh, he's an outstanding coach and an even better man. It's been a great year, Mark. Mark, I appreciate it. And, uh, I'm not sure I would call my thing a gig just yet, <laughs> but I appreciate you taking me under your wing, man. You're the best. You got it. You got it. Holly Rowe down to the sidelines, covering things sideline to sideline. Holly Rowe gives me a lot of grief now, I've got to be honest. <laughs> she was on me yesterday because I don't own blue jeans. <laughs> now, it's been a long time since I've heard any grief about not owning blue jeans. So I guess if I stay with us, I'm going to have to change my wardrobe. Huh? <laughs> hook you up with a pair of Levi's. Okay. 5.29 to go as they line up for the onside kick. And a flag down. Against the kicking team, five-yard penalty. It's against the kicking team. Some silly mistakes today, self-inflicted mistakes on the part of Arkansas. Twelve men on the field, uh, a mistake right there. And then the three turnovers, Mark. So, so a lot of mistakes today for the Arkansas Razorbacks, and they're not the kind of team that can overcome a lot of mistakes. Ball goes 10 yards, but the hands team doing a great job. Antoine Burns, Bob, corralling the loose ball for the Gophers. They lead by 15 points with 5.25 to go here in the fourth quarter. Number 18, Antoine Burns. Here you see a lot of people call this team the good hands team. Antoine Burns does an awful lot of things for this football team, Mark, and he is one of those seniors, very few seniors, but he's one of the seniors on Glenn Mason's football team. Burns, Lehan having outstanding days today, as did Nystrom, the place kicker, with five field goals. Thomas Tepay in a tailback, out of the eye. And here he is. Tepay down to the 37-yard line, tackled by Brown. Mark, and let's talk a little bit about Houston Nutt and the job he has done at Arkansas. Five straight bowl games since Houston Nutt's been at Arkansas in a very tough league. Start out one and three in the conference this year, have the off the field issue. He rallied his team and he went back to play in the SEC championship. And I'll tell you what, Arkansas is not an easy job. There's not an abundant amount of talent in that state. There's a lot of good football players, but not a, not a, a high population. They got to go a lot of different places into Texas and places like that to get players and then they compete in the SEC. So I think Houston Nuts done a great job. They got to lock up the in-state talent and then go compete against the likes of A&M and Texas and all those other schools. Arkansas calling a timeout. We'll be right back.
Just one of the many bistros downtown. The stage. Old football coach right there, Mark. <laughs> Got him a new gig going. <laughs> Used to be a head coach somewhere until they ran him out of town, huh? Minnesota leading by 15 points. Things uh, like that Patsy Klein song getting crazy right now. Third down and three. Minnesota in control. And Thomas DePay on the carry inside the 30 to the 29. 34 to go. Tell you what, the Big Ten next year. Look out. Look out. Look out. And I'll tell you what, I like this Minnesota team. I'm jumping on that bandwagon early. You know, really? Iowa with a lot of seniors on that football team. They Especially lose up front on the offensive yeah, line. Yeah, and they lose the quarterback. Red Banks graduates. Ohio State, though, with a lot of players coming back. Hey, what about uh, Wisconsin with Lee Evans coming back? I like Wisconsin. Jonathan Finished Orr. the season really strong. First down and 10 after the run by Tepay. Thomas Tepay again. And our Capital One players of the game. Tough call, folks. Very tough call, but that guy, number eight, has to win at least half of it, along with Dan Nystrom, Assad Abdul Khalik, with 223 yards passing and a touchdown and five field goals for Nystrom today, rewriting the record books. And I think a great coaching job by Minnesota's coaching staff collectively. Glenn Mason, the head coach, certainly Greg Hudson, his first game as coordinator. And Tony Peterson, the offensive coordinator. I mean, they've had a they've had a great game plan. There's Renato Fitzpatrick on the run. Well, it's a long 900-mile bus trip for some of the fans that made the trek from Minneapolis, but it'll be a fun trip nonetheless going back home after this one. The clock winding down now, 3:16 to go. Assad Abdul Khalik was the subject of a lot of scorn from their fans when they were slumping late in the season. Received a lot of nasty emails and correspondence from students and outsiders alike. But he has redeemed himself big time here. Third down and seven. The pay down to the 34, and let's go downstairs to Holly for more. Guys, it's been a very long journey for Thomas Tepe to get to this point in his football career. He started out growing up in Liberia. I'm not kidding. His first sport was soccer. He didn't even play football until he came to the United States in high school. So he's a late bloomer, and that's proving to be true today as well. Yeah, Thomas Tepe, you know, when you talk about guys in football, Bob, you see a lot of players throughout the years, but for physique's sake, this guy's got a body by Jake. I mean, he is sculpted. I would guess anywhere between, you know, four or five percent max body fat. Let's take a look at some of our Capital One Bowl Week star performances. Cliff Kingsbury, wow, did they up light up. it up or what? They lit Clemson up, and that surprised me. We had Clemson early in the year, and that's a talented football team. And Boston College, you know, Toledo, scrappy football team coming in there. Brian C. St. Pierre just took them apart throwing the ball. Pittsburgh defense doing the job in their victory, and I love Fitzgerald, their wide receiver. And I think Pittsburgh is going to be really a good football team next year with Rod Rutherford back, Larry Fitzgerald, and, and uh, their defense back. And Katie Nida making history as the first woman to kick and play in an NCAA D1 football game. Albeit she had her extra point blocked for New Mexico. Fourth down and six. Abdul Khalik going to throw it into the end zone. Intended for Ben Utech. And Arkansas will take over on downs. Surprising that Nystrom didn't get a chance right there. I know he was chomping at the bit to get in there. Well, like five, to five, his isn't, five isn't enough? Well, I'm just saying, look. <laughs> Arkansas takes over on uh, He's had a great career, a perennial Grows a finalist. And Nystrom and his teammate, Preston Gruning. Coming up next, folks, Wake Forest against Oregon in the Seattle Bowl. First and ten for Arkansas. Sorahan, incomplete, intended for Wilson. Let's go back to the studio with Reese Davis.
And Mark, we're just minutes away from taking you up to Seattle. Calvin Pace, eight sacks this season, leading Wake Forest defense against the Ducks and the Seattle Bulls. Coming up as soon as you guys are done. All right, recent, uh, boy, you talk about good rush offenses. Wake Forest, we saw them later the year against Maryland. Didn't move the ball particularly well in that game, but they can do it on the ground. Second and four, trips left formation. Sorehead sacked at the 22 by Paul Nixon. One of those undersized Minnesota defensive ends. And Arkansas, Mark, it's redundant, I know, but gets themselves in a passing, a passing game that helps Minnesota's defense immensely. Third down and 14. Incomplete. And a dropped pass, a catchable ball. Tom Crowder should have had it. 2-1 to go in the ball game. Lots of big bowl games still to come, Bob. Uh, let's go down the line a little bit. Who do you like in the national title game? Miami and Ohio State. Oh, you have to like Lucky. Miami. And no question, the best football team in the country. But I like a couple things about Ohio State. They can run the ball with a healthy Maurice Florette. They play good against the run. And to me, I know this Sunday sounds crazy. I make Dorsey beat me. Wow, that does sound a little loud. And try to take away McGinnis, the little tailback. And Ohio State has a chance to do that. Fourth and long. And they get the first down at the 38-yard line. George Wilson. I'm impressed with George Wilson. Keep playing. And Richard Smith, these big receivers from Arkansas. And right here, just a simple square in against three deep zone coverage. Rick George Wilson comes up with a play to keep the sticks moving here, Mark. First and 10. And the blow delivered by Lehan. Incomplete. Well, Capital One Bowl Week continues New Year's Eve. Two games on ESPN2, 3.30 Eastern. The Silicon Valley Bowl Classic Fresno State up against Georgia Tech and then the Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl as Air Force takes on Virginia Tech. Air Force with that uh, triple option ball attack. 141 to go. Second down and 10 for the Razorbacks. He's trying to throw that ball up the seam against this 3D coverage. That time the Quarterback and receiver Smith weren't on the same page. Sorhan getting a bad read on that one. It will be third down and 10 with 137 to go. And I'll tell you, Mark, these players, they love going to bowl games. They love the experience. But I promise you, when it's over, they're glad it's over. Because college football is a great, great sport, but it's a grind as well. These kids started back in August. They're still going strong. They're going to be happy to get away from it a while and go home. These kids haven't been home. That student body goes home over Thanksgiving, yeah. they go home over Christmas. These players don't go home. People don't realize the sacrifice they make. Sorahan is sacked and fumbles. Loose ball back at the 38. And Arkansas recovers it. Mark Lossley recovers the ball. Arkansas, a young football team as well. Only four senior starters on this team. The bulk of their football team is back next year as well. They'll regroup. Yeah, Bob, you know, in the SEC, though, not much margin for error. No question. <laughs> if you look back on Arkansas season, they had a couple wins early in the year against Boise State and South Florida that, as the year went on, you look back on them, they were big wins. So. They helped their the schedule. Exactly. Yeah. Fourth and long, 12 to go for Sorenham. Completes it again to Wilson. Wilson just keeps on playing to the last tick. And the 37, a first down. Razorbacks moving the chains. This is your favorite prevent defense. Guys almost backed up on the goal line. They're going to the end zone. And it's picked off by Justin Isom. Picked off. And that should just about do it. This one is cooked, glazed, and ready to be sliced.
Mark, I want to show you something interesting. This is Jermaine Mays right here, number 15. He is a wide receiver by trade and a special teams guy. He's the third rusher in this prevent package, number 15, Jermaine Mays. I may give my MVP of the game to him. <laughs> You talk about diversity now. Am I crazy or is that real, real, real odd? Well, that's putting speed on the field. I mean, that's the new deal today. But no, that's a little different, but not a bad idea. Abdul Khalid takes a knee. Arkansas running out of time. Side Abdul Khalid will end the season on an up note. And you talk about the Big Ten, two Big Ten teams, Iowa and Ohio State in BCS games, and Wisconsin and Minnesota off to a 2-0 start. So the Big Ten is hot right now. Glenn Mason with a big smile creeping across his mug. And the players getting ready for the Gatorade shower. I'll tell you, they ran out of gas with the water. Mark, they never <laughs> made it to their lunch spot. So Minnesota improves to 8-5 and five on the season. Our final score, 29-14. Coming up, Capital One Bowie continues with the Seattle Bowl. Wake Forest taking on Oregon. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Bob Davey, Holly Rowe, and our tired ESPN talented gang, I'm Mark Jones saying so long, everybody, from Nashville. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week.